Hello there, and welcome to Season 5, Episode 3 of the Rink Moose Hockey Podcast, an episodic podcast where two, sometimes three, sometimes four, sometimes five good friends gather around a table, a hot tub, a kitchen, a, a, a bed, anything, <laughs> <laughs> and discuss all things NHL, That's my favorite as, one. as well as <laughs> as well as their implications. In the uh, in the fantasy hockey universe, I am one of your hosts, as always, Nick Costu, back on the horse here for another episode, along with my co-host. Today, he's calling himself the Swindling Dingo, <laughs> Kyle Nice. <laughs> Kyle, uh, how are you doing uh, this fine Saturday afternoon? Yeah, pretty good. I mean, I was out all night. I was working all night, as you know, so I'm a little bit uh, groggy, a little bit out of sorts. But uh, feeling good, you know. We're lured back into the the old oh, and he's got the cap. podcast. <laughs> yeah, the, the old cap that you got me. Um, That's the, you're such a fucker. Like <laughs> this guy isn't wearing this cap this entire time we're talking, and then just as we go on the air, just to piss us <laughs> off, he th- he throws on this old school uh, Canadians hat, which which by the way I got him. So I guess yeah, it's my fault. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and that yeah, other voice you hear, yeah. And that other voice you hear, uh, making his debut on the show. Yeah. Uh, today I will call him everyone's second favorite Italian meatball because we've already we've already got one co-host, <laughs> one guy on this show who's everyone's favorite. Yeah, but that is John Ramo Rossi. Yeah, John Ramo Rossi sitting down here, our, our, our guest host today. How are you, uh, John Ramo? Yeah, I'm great. I just want to say thanks for having me, guys, and uh, you know, looking forward to having a good chat about about hockey and you know, the trade deadline. So, I mean, it's big. Why don't you uh, Why don't you give a short little spark notes um, uh, definition for, or just a synopsis for the audience of your history with the game, how long you played, where your journey took you, stuff like that, just to give some background. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I I started hockey a little bit later than I think most people would. So I didn't learn to skate till I was about eleven years old, and uh, uh, you know I played ball hockey pretty much my whole life beforehand, and then after getting on the ice. Um, you know, I, I started in house league like most of us do and then, you know, made my way to AAA uh, within a couple of years and, you know, played with the Vaughn Kings uh, down in the GCHL uh, and then played for the Kings even in my draft year. And then I was drafted to the St. Mike's Majors at the time. They're called the Mississauga Steelheads now. But um, but yeah, uh, I got drafted there. Uh, I'm a goalie just in case anybody, you know, had any wow. interest in the position. But um, but yeah, so, you know, uh, that's it pretty much. Uh, uh, I got drafted there, uh, went to rookie camp first year, um, obviously didn't make the team, went back down to play my midget year with the Vaughn Kings. And then, you know, uh, they had a couple injuries up there to, um, I believe, uh, JP Anderson was the goalie up there at the time. And, uh, he went down with an injury, uh, Spencer Martin, who, you know, is now playing with the Canucks and that he was, he was their goalie. He was their first round pick. Uh, he went down too with an injury. So, uh, I got called up and I got to sit on the bench for about seven, eight games. I uh, never really made a start, but, you know, got to, you know, got to live the life for about a week and travel with the team. And then, you know, outside of that, that was it. I, I you know, I played a couple of years of midget and then I kind of transitioned into coaching, which uh, I still do now. So I'm a goalie coach uh, part time, obviously, and I coach a bunch of teams on the weekends. I do private lessons. So, you know, yeah, that's get really that, get that plug the in there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, the Crease Goaltending Academy, baby, in Toronto. So, um, yeah, you know what? And it was a great time. You know, I met a lot of great people. I got to play with a lot of really good guys. You know, some guys are in the show now. Unfortunately, I'm not one of them. But, you know, it was, uh, yeah, it was a great ride, great people. And, um, you know, it's it's really the game that I love. And, and I still really keep up with it now. So uh, whether it's the coaching, learning the new systems. Yeah, that's that's pretty much me and my journey. So, the goalie yeah. expert. Wow, that's so th- amazing. This is, uh, yeah, sorry, Go this ahead, is Kyle. great context to have because when it comes to goaltending, I know Nick's probably a little different because he, he he does play a little bit, but yeah. that's just one of those things. I just kind of like I don't pay attention to the the nuances. I just say good goalie, bad goalie. You know, <laughs> very very high level for me. So it's good to have uh, <laughs> good to have two experts here of, of the position. <laughs> yeah, glad glad to hear. And and yeah. you, it's so, it's funny you make it sound so low key. You're like, oh yeah, I started skating when I was 11, and then, <laughs> yeah, I, and then yeah. I and then I was I playing triple A, and then I was playing triple A in no time. Like that's a that's a quick learner, if you ask wow. me. Yeah, I mean, I I mean, you know, like I, it, like it was weird. Like I was always watching hockey when I was a kid. Obviously, my dad was a big Leaf fan, so we used to watch a bunch of games together. But I don't know, like it was always ball hockey, and and I always used to play in my basement. I used to mess around, and I loved it. And then I guess it's just one day I was like, pops, I'm like. 
it's time to play ice hockey. And he's like, what position do you want to play? He's like, please don't say goalie. And I'm like, I want to play goalie. And I remember we went out and got a whole bunch, had those big brown leather, those heavy pillow pads on, you know, and after yeah. they got, and after they got soaked, you had like 20 pounds per leg, but that was it. And then I started obviously training at the goalie school. I'm still coaching. I was doing lessons like, like one or two private lessons a week. Cause I had so much catching up to do. And then that was it, man. It just, you know, like, like the years go by fast. Like you think 11 and you had five years till your draft year. You're like, man, you're in like grade 10 in high school and you're already trying to decide, you know, wh- like what you want to do or what yeah. teams you want to play for. It's, it's just, everything comes wow. so quickly. And it, you know, if I could go back and do it again, I absolutely would. So, yeah. Can I just Love ask it. you a quick question about that before we move yeah, on? Yeah, absolutely. I do a little bit of coaching of, of young kids right now, about five, six, seven years old. Yeah. Um, when you, because you, it sounds like you had a passion for the game, you know, from the start. You weren't playing ice hockey or whatever, but you were fooling around the yeah. ball hockey and whatnot. Did your passion for the game change as you took on a more kind of professional approach to the game with all these camps and all this catch up? Yeah, I mean, like, you know, when I first started, like, it was all fun. It was just get on the ice, have a good time, you know, played house league. But it was kind of like when I, you know, when you start taking the goalie lessons, and the goalie lessons really weren't there to say, like, you know, my goal is to make the show. The goalie lessons were to say, hey, can I at least play a competent level of goaltending and, you know, maybe make a little bit of a push and try to, you know, play at a decent level. And then... And then it, it was honestly, it was all on a whim. I was at home. I don't know if you guys have ever played at Vaughn uh, Sports Village, but, I'm, but I live really close to there. So they had, they had Vaughn Panther double-A tryouts, and, you know, and, and, and I was just like, why not just go? It's like pay the money, get on the ice, and play. And then at midnight the same night, the coach calls and is like, you want a spot on the team? And that, for me, was when it changed because I'm like, you know, from house league immediately to go into double-A, and then kind of sit there for about only two years and then go to triple a a year and a half before my draft year was good. But it was that moment I got that spot to play double a, I was like, you know, maybe I should actually take this seriously. And then that's kind of when things changed. And, and obviously I was still young at the time. So it's like, you know, I wasn't working out or anything, but it was more like, yeah, like this is a big focus. I started watching hockey more. I started, yeah. you know, learning the position more. And then that was it. I played, you know, two years of double a, and then I went to a triple-A tryout again, Vaughn, just for the shits to see what would happen, and, and I made the team. Um, and then that was it. And then from there, once I made triple-A in Bantam, I was like, this is the focus. It was gym, school. You know, I barely went out. Like, you know, my days were like, come home from class, bang out the homework, and then get down to, like, fucking Hershey Center at, like, 5.30 for a game, come home, bed, rinse and repeat. And that's really when it picked up for me. And coaching then pushed that a bit further because – I was like, well, now I'm not playing, but I got to keep up with the game. And goaltending's changed immensely over the years. Like, it, it's like every week, you, you know, there's a new move, there's a new position, everything. It changes constantly. So that's why my passion's kept up and why I still watch, you know, as many games as I can a week to learn and see what goalies are doing so I can yeah. translate that to my coaching and help these kids, you know, move forward, right? Yeah. When you were young, like 11 to 16 or whatever, how yeah. much of that watching and studying was part of your growth? Oh, I'd like, I'd say at least, at least 60%. Like, wow. you know, it, it's, it's because like when you go out for goalie lessons, it's like you only get the one hour on the ice. Right. And, and, yep. and, and that's it. And there's, there's other kids after you. So, you know, you don't really have time to sit down with my coach at the time and be like, Hey, can we have a conversation or, or, hey, like, this happened here and there. So, for me, it started to become more like, you know, we had a guy on our team who used to, like, record our games. I, 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 like, I used to do my own video, right? Like, anything for me to get ahead, because I knew I was so far behind. And I'm not that tall, right? I'm, like, you know, like, I'm 5'9 on a good day. You know what I mean? So, it's like, for me, I didn't have the height advantage that these kids now are 15, 16, and they're 6'1", 6'2". These guys are already built, built to play net, right? So, I'm, like, I'm coming in as a smaller goalie. I'm coming in with way less experience. Like, I, I, I really had to do as much as I could to make up for lost time, right? Yeah. But video and stuff, honestly, it's just huge. Just watching and just picking up on, like, you know, like you mentioned earlier, the nuances. Mm-hmm. Being able to pick up on that and then ask my coach, say, hey, I watched this game. I saw this here. What do you think? Is this appropriate? And we yeah. kind of go through it. And so really, yeah, watching is big. I'm a huge proponent of video. I think as goaltenders, it goes a long way, more so than forwards, because forwards, it's like systems, you know, you, you have to learn the system and play, but with goalies on video, you can pick up everything, is your angle off, are you too deep, it's, yep. it's really great, it's a great tool, and it's being integrated more and more now, like, there's kids that are 10 years old that are watching video, when yep. I played, it was like, there was no video till I got to that, you know, almost that minor midget year, 
So there's 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 a lot that changes. I well, Nick, uh, yeah. Nick's a big proponent of video. We we had yeah. our men's league one year in the summer, <laughs> and we got so heavily into this league. Like, we were losing a lot of games, and we're like, we need to stop this. We need to figure it out. We were coming up with line combos the whole night. <laughs> we had my girlfriend film the games, and then Nick and I would go over with, I love no- it. with notes <laughs> <laughs> and, okay. and, and try to like oh Dante's not back checking here we're gonna yeah. clip this video and send it to him like, <laughs> yeah and be like what are you doing man like you think this is just for fun <laughs> but it, that was my first experience with the whole video thing and my yeah. god do you see a whole different side of things yeah. but like it no. was really good context despite it being such a low level men's league kind of thing like you were learning oh why am I not looking in this area here mm-hmm. like that's a yeah. whole new place I never look you know yeah Oh, and to John Ramos' point, for goalies, I think it's to the greatest degree because then you see the angle, right? And and yeah. as from a goalie's perspective, you don't know what the shooter's seeing. But if you get that on video and you get that perspective, then you can go, oh, my God, I'm a fucking idiot. Why am I not there, you know, right. where I should be? So I totally get you, man. Yeah, it, it's, um, it's, it's just so big. And I think that, you know, with how quickly the game moves, and you know how fast shots come in, and yeah, it's like there's so much that goes on. Even just moving in the net is is so big these days because you know we've had the privilege of watching guys like Carey Price and Jonathan Quick play net, who are two fantastic goalies, maybe the two best of you could say the last ten years when you put everything all together. But when you look at their styles, they're completely different, right? Jonathan Quick's the most athletic goalie I've ever seen. He's a guy that can just he literally sit in the splits all game long and wait. Incredible. And then there's Carey Price, who looks like he doesn't break a sweat when he plays, right? And goaltending's moved towards the Carey Price style of saying less is more. You know, we need to be efficient with our movements. We need to be quick. We need to understand where we are in the net and understand what type of, you know, skating mechanism we want to use to get to that location. So video is really what it is because those are the videos we show and say, you know, look at your movement and now look at his. Okay, so what? The kid's 15 years old, but look at Carey Price, right? He was doing this at your age. Right. And goalies are doing this now at 15, right? Like, it, it, it's like, the, you know, the sports have gone like this. It's been this constant upward trajectory of, like, the resources available to these, you know, to these kids and these young adults that are playing that it's like, you know, if you're not using video, you're way behind everybody else. Like, you, you have to do everything these days, right? Right. right. Um, yeah. Uh, spe- speaking of the goal, the young goalies, and, and then we'll move on here. Uh, yeah. v- very lastly, though, uh, there's a great story of uh, so John Ramo. I don't know if I, I shared this with you, but I am uh, the number one fan of Pierre Maguire. Oh, I, 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 I love this man. I think he's brilliant. And, <laughs> and, and, and I love him because he's a clown. I do love him because he's a clown, but I think he has insight. I do. Complete and clown, uh, yeah. and and I know he lost his job with the Sens within not even a calendar year, but <laughs> but I I'll, I'll share the story nonetheless. He was talking yeah, to Jonathan absolutely. Quick. He was talking to Jonathan Quick once, and he said, yeah. "Well, like these kids are watching you. They want to be like you. Like you're this. You know, you just won back to back cups. Like like Con Smythe winner. Like what's your yeah. advice for them?" And his advice was, "Well, don't play goalie like me because you'll just right. end up in the operating room every That's other right. year." And I think yeah, what you just absolutely. said about price and, and him makes so much sense for that reason. Yeah, it's, it's you know what, like, and, and it's so funny you mention that because growing up, if you ask me who my favorite goalie was, my game play was exactly like Jonathan Quick's. Mm. I, like the way he moved, and I mean, you could, like, you look at, like, LA's two cup runs. If he doesn't play the way he does, they don't win anything. Like, he was, barn- it was one of the most, inc- it was a clinic like absolutely unbelievable the way he played, whether it's just miraculous gloves. He's never out of it. And you're right. His body's taken a toll. And I think that's why he hasn't maybe aged as well as some other goalies have, you know, he kind of hit that peak 27, 28, 29. And then the last four or five years, it's kind of been a dog fight for him. You know, he gets into a groove. It's his groin. He gets into a groove. It's his back. It's his knee. And then, and then when he gets back in the first game, you watch the way he plays and he's, and, and, and he's got skate on skate on the post. He's in the splits again. And you're like, man, this guy just got back. He's like 37 years old. Like, how's he still doing this, right? And, and I think that it's one of those styles where he's right. You don't want to play like him. You want to play like Price. Um, but then again, like, look at guys like Dominic Hossack, right? Like, no yeah. style, but they're just unbelievable at doing what they do. And Quick was kind of the same thing. He's like a refined version, right, of sure. somebody who kind of went through the training that Hossack didn't get because of the, you know, the generations of hockey. But, yeah, just, oof, man, it is a tough, tough way to play the game. 
Yeah. Well, hey, all the more reason it's great to have you. You'll be able to lend some <laughs> some, knowl- some knowledge on these these moves, these goalies moving because there Absolutely. were there were no shortage of them. So let let's yeah. start with. Uh, so, anyways, everyone, we're, we're you know timing is obvious. The the date at which we're releasing this episode, we're just going to be going over some of the most notable trade deadline moves, our thoughts, winners, losers, contenders, pretenders at this point, heading into <laughs> the last month of the season. So, uh, without further ado, I want to start with the biggest one and. There might be some debate what was the biggest one, but in my opinion, I think this is the biggest one because you never see a player of this magnitude move, especially in the middle of a season. It's usually an off-season thing, but we saw it. We basically saw a Hall of Famer traded, um, and that's Patrick Kane. Uh, Patrick Kane getting traded to the uh, to the New York Rangers uh, along with uh, uh, defenseman Cooper Zek in exchange for to the Blackhawks, a 2023 conditional second rounder. A 2025 uh, fourth rounder, uh, defenseman Vili Sir J- Sir Jarvi D Andy Walinski, uh, and the Coyotes acquiring a 2025 third round pick from the Rangers. And as far as uh, salary retention, uh, Blackhawks to retain 50 percent of Kane's salary for the remainder of his deal, as well as the Coyotes retaining 25. So that's only 25 percent of his salary going to the Rangers. So huge deal, huge blockbuster, but probably not the most surprising. It was in the news for quite some time. Everyone kind of saw it coming. It was really only a matter of when. So Kyle, you being the uh, the, the the neighborhood uh, Rangers fan here, um, what were your reaction? What was your reaction? What were your thoughts? Um, how do you see this going here for the Rangers? You know, it's it, there's always many sides to. Uh like looking at the game, what I what I followed along on Twitter a lot was how the analytics guys would, were tearing apart Patrick Kane. Like this is a terrible player. Like why are they doing this? Like it just blows me away that it, he's a fantastic offensive player. He maybe doesn't play the best defense, but uh, my God, there he's going to make them a better team. You already see it on the power play. He's still got the hands. He's still got the vision. He's zipping the puck around. Him and Panarin with the uh, with the chemistry. But th- this deal itself wasn't necessarily about the return, because let's be honest, for a player of this ilk, this return was kind of pitiful. And it's because, shockingly enough, you know, Patrick Kane really hamstrung the, the Chicago Blackhawks. They had nothing to do. They had nothing to do but trade him to New York, or like with the no trade clause, it was over. So the return for the Blackhawks was underwhelming. Uh, I feel like he really forced their hand in this, and... Uh, my God, the New York Rangers, like, they keep getting guys like this, eh? Like, they get the Panarins of the world. Like, guys, people just want to go there. Terrence like, Sanko. Americans love to go to New York. It, you know, it's not like that with Canada. We don't have a team. Maybe the Leafs are kind of turning into that. Homegrown Ontario talent is kind of like, oh, I want to play for the Leafs now that they're good. Canada's never really seen a, a team like this because uh, it just seems like a great landing spot for aging American stars or guys who just want to go to the big the big stage but yeah they're they're an amazing team now uh the top six is unbelievable uh they're going to be a really tough out and uh just sad sad return for the blackhawks unfortunately but yeah that's just that's just the way it it shakes down john ramo yeah i i mean i i think you hit the nail on the head i mean anybody that's slandering patrick kane needs to go back and watch 10 years of hockey and tell me that he's maybe not (laughs) One of the top, like maybe behind Crosby and Ovechkin, one of the most not only exciting players to watch, but an unbelievable talent who can single-handedly win you a hockey game. And and the slander is brutal. I mean, oh, like, and, and 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 it kind of lends to my issue to analytics, which is a, I, I think a topic for another day. But you know, speaking of the trade itself, yeah, the return was brutal. But like you said, he was hamstrung, right? He really only wanted New York, and. That's all they can get. And I mean, really, you either get nothing for him and lose him in free agency or you get something, right? And I think the return is what it is. But I think this is more about the Rangers than it is the Blackhawks. The Blackhawks have a long way to go in terms of rebuilding, a long oh, way. Yeah. Long, um, long road. And, and I think they expected more from get. I think they expected to get a lot more for Kane to, to really speed that rebuild up. And they, I think, hoped that Taves was healthy as well, so they could have got him on the move. But I mean... You know, you look back and think their two best players maybe in franchise history considering the Stanley Cups they won and what it's meant to the city. To get maybe never even a first-round pick for either of them in return, I think it's going to really hamper and hamstring the rebuild. But looking back towards the Rangers, I mean, that top six is filthy now. Like, that top six is ridiculous. Like, 
like like the chemistry between them from Chicago, I think is an underrated aspect of this trade, and I think it's maybe why Kane wanted to push that more. Like, yes, play in a high-pressure city, but getting to play with Panarin again brings some familiarity. But that top six is fantastic. Uh, I think their back end is great. Um, I thought they'd have, honestly, honestly, I thought they'd have a better record to this point in the season. I thought last year they played a little bit of a higher level of hockey. They haven't been great this year per se. They've been good in stretches and bad in others. I've seen four or five game losing streaks, seven game win streaks. It's been so topsy-turvy. But a team like Boston today, it's like this is a good measuring stick. And I think Boston's handled them more than well. I, I mean, I've been watching this game. It, it's just ridiculous. Boston stomped them. But I think they're going to be great. I think they're maybe maybe going to be one of the Metro's biggest chances of getting through alongside Carolina. But the move just fills out the top six in a way that I think every team would dream of. Like, like I wanted him on the Leafs because I think he gives that, you know, it allows the Leafs to move bunting down, for example. But, you know, we'll get to that. I just think that the top six has been filled out so nicely in New York and, and they're really set up for a deep, deep run. Yeah, I mean, I... Yeah, I, I agree. I think we ought to focus more on the Rangers here because with the yeah. Blackhawks, it's it's the same facts. You know, it's the fact Kane waited so long to tell them he was willing to go, and then B, this was the only team he was willing to go to. So those are the two factors. We've already been over that. But with the Rangers, just watching that game on Thursday, I love that power play. Seeing Fox, Panarin, mm. and Kane, two half circles point, just flipping it back That's and fun, forth. Yeah. I don't think there's a threesome better in the NHL. I know Oilers have a pretty good one going, but now they have Bouchard, you know, and Barry was never really that kind of guy. Mm. You know, I never really liked Barry, Barry very much. I, I think he's overrated. But um, but but those three guys oh. on the Rangers, I mean, you cannot you cannot beat them. I, I don't think that there's a combo better in the league. Colorado, Kyle, maybe Ranton and McKinnon, McCarr. Those yeah, are probably that's... the two best. Those are probably the two best. And just watching those guys snap it because – Kane, mm-hmm. I don't think he skates like he used to. He no. doesn't seem to have that that, that stride in his step. Speed, but man, yeah, those those hands, there. the creativity, the elusiveness, um, he's mm-hmm. he's right up there with McKinnon in my mind, best hands in the league. So I'm very excited to see that power. I know they didn't score in that Ottawa game. I, it just sounds like yeah. they didn't score in this game either. But maybe just some reps, get some more reps. Kreider in front of the net. Zabanajad in the middle. Like yeah. I don't think there's a filthiest power play uh, I- in the league if they can get this together. Yeah. Just to quickly piggyback one last point uh, there, you're probably right in the fact that I- where he's going to be most efficient is that power play because the, yeah. the foot speed doesn't matter as much. But yeah. man, he's still got all those elements. The other thing too, you know, I, I can see this taking a little bit to solidify in New York because. I followed the Rangers a lot this year. They have they have always had a very distinct pecking order in terms of who the stars are. These yeah. are our top power play guys. These are our, our stars. And then there's everybody else. That has now changed with the Tarasenko, the Canes, big personality, championship guy. It's going to take some time for that to all settle out, you know. Guys with new roles, guys with, you know, I've got to make room for him because it's Patrick Kane. You yeah. know, personalities jiving. It's going to take some time for that to all solidify, and then I think they're going to be just unreal. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I would, I would completely agree. I mean, the top six is fantastic. Obviously, a lot of big personalities, but I think even what's underrated is how you know people talk about how the deadline. We want to bring in guys with experience, guys that have been there. I mean, what better two guys than Tarasenko and Kane, who've got four Stanley mm-hmm. Cups between them? Like. Man, these guys have been there. They know how to win. They got plenty of points in the playoffs, so you know what you're going to get. There's no surprises, right? Like, yeah, I, I just think it was a good fit for Kane. It's a good fit for the Rangers. Yeah. Yeah. For me, for me, I think they 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 are now my favorite team in the Metro. There, I yeah. uh, I it's hard not to see that, especially with the goalie in the crease they have, and then and then the addition of Kane. The defense now being more built up. Keandre oh, Miller's maturity, how much he's grown. I know he had the spin incident. But that's yeah, the yeah. Day. But um, but no, I, I think I think they're just a more mature group than last year, and, and and I think they have you know Carolina. I think I like the team more, but they don't have the the goaltending that the Rangers do. So I probably have them uh, atop there in the Metro. But speaking of the Metro, their division rival made a huge blockbuster. Uh, they got Ooh. the number one guy on the trade bait board, and that's Timo yep. Meyer. Uh, the Swiss native joins his uh, fellow uh, countrymen, uh, uh, Nico Heischer, uh, Siegenthaler, those guys up there in New Jersey. Uh, Devils acquiring Meyer, Scott Harrington, a defenseman, forward Timur, 
Ibrahim, Ibrahimov, D. Santeri, Hataka, G. Z- Why are there so many fucking <laughs> bad, weird names out there I don't this know, year? Man. This is terrible. This is a terrible year. Uh, goalie Zachary e- e- uh, Emmond and a fifth round pick in exchange for going to the Sharks. You know, of course, you know, they were looking to get a big haul here. They end up getting a 2023 conditional first, a 2024 conditional second, a 2024 seventh round pick. Andreas Janssen, formerly Fabian Zetterland, uh, top prospect Shakir Mukh- uh and, uh, and uh, defenseman Nikita Ohotchuk. And, of course, uh, the Sharks retaining 50% of uh, Myers remaining deal. So huge deal. I think it was the biggest as far as just quantity uh, yeah. of, of pieces going each way. Um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll be very brief and I'll lead it to you guys. I thought the sharks should have got more here as a sharks fan. I would have really liked more. I know there's a whole ton of prospects on that devil's team, uh, including, you know, I know they have the Hughes and they got one of the Hughes brothers who's still developing the defenseman. They got Nemich, uh, they got Mercer. They got Holtz. I mean, those are four real A prospects there. And the fact that the Sharks couldn't pry one of them left me as a Sharks fan extremely disappointed. I think Mukhamadoulin, whatever the fuck his name is, <laughs> is more, is more, yeah, is more yes, of a B, B, yes. B plus at this point. Yeah. And uh, and then they get some picks, but again, picks are as we'll say a lot on this show today. I'm sure picks are only good if if you actually capitalize on them. And I'd rather have a top A prospect than a potential A prospect. So for me, not getting one of those four guys was huge. It was a huge loss for that defenseman Greer. And I think he I think he failed here as his first big test of a uh, Sharks GM. That's my hot take. So Devils 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 uh, get the big carrot here, and I think it's a huge huge win for them. Yeah, I mean, you know what? Uh, I think you summed up the return for the Sharks pretty good. I mean, we all know this is a very deep, good draft. But New Jersey had some guys there that uh, you pencil in as, hey, this is a great prospect. And you know what? We've got all this fucking extracurricular nonsense with all these like a- extra guys. I don't know why they had to get so many depth guys moved. It's like, what, what, are, you, what are you smoke screening here? It's, it's like very odd. Uh, they got the 2023 first rounder. That's good, but uh, I mean it's Timo Meyer. He's he's such a great player. You would have liked to see a first and potentially one of those top prospects. It speaks a lot to what the market was like this year. Yeah, it, a common theme I notice is good players going for pretty cheap value. Yeah, um, I mean Bo Horvat fetched his price, and I think he he fetched quite a lot. Uh, that was done early, and then things kind of changed from there. So in terms of analyzing it from New Jersey's perspective, A-plus to the GM. They got the guy that fits the, the need that that they had. They wanted to get a little bigger, a little bit nastier. Uh, this guy is also going to be on their team for quite a while. Looks like he's going um, gonna to stick there. And uh, you know what? Uh, to me, I, I'm not a big New Jersey guy. I, I don't think this team is poised to get out of the first round. Yeah. Unless they play like a Pittsburgh, but uh, this is this is a good get for them, um, and it, it look it looks good it looks good on paper. Uh, we'll see how it all jives. Like, um, you know, you know, I, I've I've had my issues with this uh, with this team and trusting this core. So uh, we'll see, we'll see. But he's the, he's the right guy. Like a plus of the GM, uh, analyzed the need and and he filled that need. So good for them. Yeah, yeah. No, I I I think with Meyer what. You know, what interested me the most was how, you know, and, and again, when you look at New Jersey, right, for a team to be this good and have four prospects that you could say maybe crack the top 15 right now around hockey, I think it's tough to not walk away with one of them. I think if I was Greer, I'd be looking for at least Holtz. I mean, I think that Nemec is probably off the table because he's just drafted and considering, you know, the world junior that he had, he was... And, he, you're, and you're not getting Jack Hughes' brother, otherwise... No, 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 <laughs> there's, there's like, 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 Timo Meyer's good... But he's not good enough to fetch your like, and we're not talking getting just a number one, you know, like the devil's best prospect. We're talking about potentially one of the best prospects in hockey, right? At this current moment, I think it's difficult to get that. But to leave without Holtz, who you know, I, I I've gone to a bunch of Marley's games this year, and I've got to see Holtz live a couple times, and man, he's a player. Um, and I think that Holtz is going to have a really good career. He's going to be an elite scorer, power play guy. He's great how the Sharks don't walk away with Holtz in a first and, a, and then whatever other nonsense and, 
you know, AHL level guys they want to bring in. I, I, I like, I just don't get it. Um, I don't know if maybe Greer overplayed his hand here and thought that quantity was necessarily better than quality. I agree. Muhammad is going to be a good player, but he's not like he, like he, he's not going to replicate Timo Meyer, Right. And I, I'm trying to look for a prospect that's going to give me something in return. And I just don't think they really got that. Kudos to the Devils, man. They got a great player. They got a lot better, but I agree, Kyle. I, 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 I don't think they're poised for a first-round exit either. There's just something about the Devils when I watch that's like, like they're good, but it's almost like they're still so young where it's like you kind of don't get that feeling where it's like when I watch Carolina and the Rangers, I'm like, man, this team can win a round no problem. But there's just something about the Devils where it's like, is Vitek Vanacek really the goalie that you're going to go into this first round with with a team that young? Yeah. And a back end that's good, but I mean, really, like, like it's anchored by Dougie Hamilton, and then the names from there are kind of like, there's some good ones, but I mean, like, it's Dougie Hamilton's, you know, core that he runs back there, right? And I think that guys like that will get run into the ground, you know, when it comes playoff times and the games get tighter. Uh, it, it's going to be tough, but the Devils hit a home run here. Like, 100% they hit an A with this. They gave up. Like, to walk away with your four best prospects in Meyer, like, you know, look two years in the future. If all four of those guys hit the show, which I'm sure they will, and Meyer's still there because he's an RFA, not a UFA, so they're going to be able to, you know, they're going to retain his rights, and he's not really going to have super good leverage, I think, with the whole, because I don't know how it works with the RFAs, but, like, my whole thing is, imagine that team in two, three years down the line. Like, yeah. like, 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 it's going to be ridiculous with all the talent, and they're going to be all 25 and under. Like, yeah. it, it's just insane. It's insane. Crazy. My my hang up, you mentioned Holtz. My hang up is is Dawson Mercer. I mean, I I this is a guy. He's not he's not he's not Hughes and he's not Nemich, but he's but in he that did. next tier. He's good, Maybe man. he he's should so have been good. the candidate. He should have been the guy I would have been asking for if I was. You know what, Nick? I would one hundred percent agree. I think the reason why they wouldn't let Mercer is because he's played with the team he's this a, year. Yeah, and, and he's, he's not like a, a guy that was in the mind. That's exactly what I mean, right? So because he's now played in the league, yeah. he's like, he's a prospect, but he's a guy that said, fuck, he can play at this level and he's yeah. ready to go. He's on and I don't such think the year. Devils, exactly, right? And I don't think the Devils are going to think, well, if I'm getting rid of Mercer to, you know, to replace Mercer with, you know, um, oh my God, I, like his name already escapes me, uh, Timo Meyer. It's yeah. like, what have you really done, right? Like you've moved laterally. It's either you get Mercer and you get him, or you or you flip flop, but then what have you achieved, right? So the fact that you keep Mercer, and again, I like for me, it would have been if they came asking, and I'm the GM, I would have tried to avoid all four. But if I had to give up one, it would only be Holtz because I, like I, I think the other three just aren't replaceable. Like Holtz is a winger you can find, oh my God, right? Yeah. But I mean, Mercer's like mm-hmm. he's great at his age. Nemich is going to be an unbelievable defenseman, and obviously Hughes is. I mean, he was ridiculous at the World Juniors. Like he, like you can't give that up. Right. No, I so, I'm so uh, impressed yeah, with awesome. this this Merce. Kyle was was really banging his drum during the World Junior year when they played in uh, when they played over in Europe the laugh <laughs> team right that was the laugh team right Kyle uh, he was on the laugh team you know it might have been a year after that I it, think, I think after, it was a year after was, yeah yeah he was on the team twice and one of the years he was kind of more of a depth guy and then the second yeah. year right he was that was really, the laugh really, year really in uh, in Europe the correct, the correct. in eastern Europe and and I and I liked his interviews he had good character he was a good newfie boy and I really liked him but I just didn't see his game and now like I I stay you know I was snow- we were all snowed in yesterday I was watching the the <laughs> Vegas Golden Knights against against Jersey and this guy was 10 shots on goal he sniped a beauty against Aiden Hill and uh, and he was flying all over the ice. This kid Oof. can skate. I'd never seen that element of his game, but he can yeah. really skate. And I was yeah. like, "Fuck!" Like the Sharks. I would I would have done everything to try to pry this guy from them. <laughs> he, yeah. he and he's an absolute wizard with with his stick handling. Like he's got speed, stick handling. If if he's already f- starting to figure it out, but the vision and the and like the speed of the game, if he can get there, like he's yeah. he's going to be a bona fide top six, maybe top line player. Yeah. Um, and I'll 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 give myself a little discredit here. When I was at, out that year, Nick, with the junior scouting that uh, in that, Oakville, the yes, the yeah. uh, the you know the, the camp. tryout, the yeah. camp, the, the camp. I I did not like the look of Mercer whatsoever. I'm like <laughs> this guy, he's just he looks goofy out there. <laughs> like I was just like, how's this? How'd this guy make the team? New Hook Ouch. got cut that year. Mercer mm-hmm. made it, and I was like up in arms. I was like, what the hell is this? New looks another great player, but yeah, and I man. and I give myself uh, just a shake because 
what a player you know i mm-hmm. i shouldn't it's just goes to show it was just like one small sample size yeah is yeah. not enough and he's nope. he's awesome he's an awesome awesome player my question for nick as the san jose fan would you have been satisfied with a timo meyer for dawson mercer one for one um, at this point, I think the Sharks need more than just one player. I think they need a bunch of things because they're in a tough spot because not only are they not going to contend for the next few years, but their prospect pool isn't great. It's it's middling at best. You saw right. Ryan Merkley traded two years yeah. ago. Ryan no. Merkley was supposed to be the next big guy in San Jose. They're, they're yeah. first rounder. They're, they're puck moving defensemen. And uh, yeah, other he he goes, which go shows the lack of, of 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 amateur scouting on their on their staff. He goes for nothing, uh, basically gave him away, and 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 it's just it's just baffling how little how few prospects they have at this point. Eklund I, looks like yeah. he's going to be a good piece, and I'm excited about him. But I think when you're the Sharks, I you kind of got to accumulate as many assets as you can at this point. So yep. maybe yeah. maybe I defend Greer from that standpoint. He did get a lot of quantity, and and you need darts to throw at the dartboard if you're the Sharks right now, yeah. um, and hoping some stick. But I just wish I got one of those na- one uh, one yeah. big name, and then and then the picks, you know, instead of just sure. a, a bunch of picks and a and a B prospect and Muknabadulin. So that's yeah. my take. Uh, but anyways, moving on, another big piece that was traded. This one a little later than the ones we just summed up, uh, and that's Jake Chikrin. Uh, Jake, Jake Chikrin, finally, the, yes. the saga ends. The saga of waiting, you know, a year and a half, two years for this guy to move. Finally happens. And, Kyle, it's our boy Pierre fucking Dorian oh, out there so out good. there in Ottawa. Uh, John Ramo, Kyle and I, huge Pierre fans. We, we were once at the CHL top prospect game. And we saw this guy walking around, walking around the streets of the seedy streets of Hamilton with, with a, a fucking with, with a Jan Sport backpack on. He looked like a what fucking. A weapon. He looked like a kid out there. <laughs> taking and it public was, transit. Weapon. Yeah, taking public transit <laughs> with a Jan Sport bag. It was it was like he Beauty. was a poor college student. And uh, and I'm like, man, this guy, this guy, and and every time, you know, every time he's on camera, he always looks fucking tired as hell. You know, he's working the phones, <laughs> and I'm glad, I'm glad he made it work this time, getting Chikrin. And honestly, for a great price, considering what the rumors were saying, rumors had it, you know, Armstrong wanted two firsts, top a prospects, oh. and 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 Ottawa, they don't they don't part with you know any other big guys like uh, like Ridley Gregg. Or any of those, you know, or Brandstrom or, Sanderson, or, or, yeah. or Sanderson, none of those defensemen. And they basically only trade a first and I believe two seconds, which was a, a it's a great it's a great trade for Ottawa. And, and to me, it sounds like Arizona just waited too long and they they succumbed at the last minute to whatever they were going to get. So. Um, yeah, why don't you? Uh, I want your input on this one first, John Ramo, because <laughs> oh, you brought you brought up a good point the other day, which is if Ottawa, yeah. if it only took this much from Ottawa, why couldn't anyone else ante up more, yeah. being the Leafs and the Oilers? So why don't you go yeah. from there? That's right. I I mean, I, I th- this deal will baffle me for a while, and I think that you know when you look at Jake Chikrin, great defenseman. I mean, I mean even years back when I saw him at the World Juniors, this guy was a projected like top 5 pick at the time, right? If it wasn't for some injuries and other stuff. He he was a top 5 pick. And now you're seeing why. I mean, injuries aside, but this deal baffles me because Ottawa's been doing this now for for a little bit and and like and it frustrates me because there's like six people at their barn every week and yet the team's doing this well in terms of actually getting guys like you know, like the Debrinket deal like holy shit, like, like this is Ottawa, right? Like, this isn't a team that makes these types of moves, right? This is a team that I thought was going to have to actually go from the draft and start from there, not really pick up many free agents. And then you go and you get Giroud, who's got the experience. You go and you bring Debrinkhead, and it's like, holy shit, you just added almost an entire second line like that, you know? And, and now you go ahead and you add a guy like this to a defense core that's Thomas Shabbat, who is a workhorse. You add Shabbat, you add Branstrom potentially in the future, Sanderson and Chikrin. Are you kidding me? Like, if this top four plays to its potential, this it, like, it's fucked. Like, I, I've genuinely never seen a team that's gone out and made these types of moves and give up nothing, right? I think Ottawa, I honestly think all Ottawa's missing is, is, is really is a goaltender they can consistently rely on and a young tendy. And this is kind of the same situation that we were talking about earlier with Buffalo, where it's like they're just a goalie away from being a team that's reliable. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, I love the move. They gave up nothing. As a Leaf fan, I'm frustrated because 
I mean, when I saw the return for Sandine, I'm thinking, how do you not go for a first and Sandine is better on paper already than what Ottawa offered? You get a ready I prospect. Agree. Right? You get a ready prospect in Sandine who's proven he can play at the NHL level, and you get a first round pick. So really, it's a first and a first, and you're telling me Sandine's not worth two seconds? Yeah. So it's like, to me, that deal's there. Why it didn't work, I don't know, right? Whether it's, whether it's who knows? But it, it's just, it, it's baffling how little they got. And if I'm Arizona, I'm absolutely livid because it's really my only big trade chip, right? Like, like, really, it's the one piece that I had to trade. You know, they didn't trade Schmaltz, who I thought was another guy they could get a lot for. They didn't do that. So really, what do you get? You get a first and, and thing. Like, if Ottawa go on a run, like those picks are going to be nothing. They're, they're going to be worth nothing. And Chickren's going to be a top four defenseman. Maybe top two if the development and the injuries slow down. I mean, this is a home run for Ottawa. This is an A for Ottawa and a big F, a, a big L for, for, for the Arizona Coyotes in their, in their shit barn. So, not yes, good. Yes, yes, yes. It was, the deal, it was the deal of the two shit barns. That's exactly it. <laughs> That's what it exactly was. Exactly it. Goalie yeah. Skochance chance every game there. So, yeah. so this, this might be my favorite deal of the whole lot. Yeah. Be- because... I, I had a – at first look, I had this internal debate. I was like, you know what, teams like Ottawa, teams like Detroit, Buffalo, these bubble teams, when is the kind of point where you're like, okay, I'm going to stop with the draft picks. Now I can yeah. transition my focus on I want to get players. I want to get better. I want to make a push. And I, I kind of thought about it, and I was like, you know what, look, look at this roster, and they've got all the makings of – their core being almost solidified. You've got Shabbat, you've got Sanderson, now you've got Chikrin on the back end. Your, your defensive core is done. Like, your defensive core is finished. How Are you work you? the outer trimmings, sure, whatever whatever you want to do. Uh, Stutzel, Kachuk, guys like Debrinkat now, Drake Batherson, like, you, you've got the makings. Pinto, Giroux's out there as well. Like, you've got the makings of a really solid forward core. So, yeah. you look at that, And you're like, okay, this is a team that made that decision. They were bold enough to make that decision. We're done drafting shit. You know, we're done drafting guys to be in our top six. Like, we have that now. So let's trade that first rounder. Absolutely. Now is the time. And I think that that can be commended. And then you look at other teams and and you kind of wonder, okay, when is your time? When should Buffalo have done something? They stayed status quo. Detroit kind of sold a little bit. So it, it kind of makes, uh, makes you think, and, and what a move by Dorian to recognize that and to, you know what, it's, it's about to be very green pastures in, in Ottawa for the next <laughs> few years. Like, this is going to be great. Yeah. There's such an exciting team. I, I'm watching Ottawa, New York the other day. You know what I'm thinking? There's no, there's no team that I want to see in the playoffs more than this Ottawa team. Brady Kachuk's fucking unbelievable. What an unbelievable player. Yeah. I want to see what this guy can do in, in, in the first round. Like, this guy is unbelievable. At some point, you know, they were down, and in the third period, Kachuk starts throwing his weight around. Now, I think you were watching that game too, Nick. Yeah. He almost – he buckled Lafreniere to the point where he was oh. doubled over. Laf- and then the ran puck into ends him. up. Laf- yes. Like fucking ran into him and went right down. Ran into the freight train, man. Yes. Like, at some point, Kachuk was like, fuck this game. I'm going to yeah. fuck people up and score goals. And that's what he did. I'm like, this guy – you got the skill in Stutzel. Now you've got these horses on defense. I always said, if you're going to be a legitimate playoff team, you need a guy who can, you can just dump minutes on. Now they've got that in Shabbat, and, and they've got that in Chikrin, with Chikrin being kind of that solid defensive guy as well. It's just, like you said, John, like, get the goalie. Yeah. And you big got thing. big things here. Like, this is a good team already, and some of these young guys are still sprouting a little bit. Holy, like, wow, this is going to be this is going to be fun. Like, sell the team to someone who's willing to take this team to the top, mm-hmm. spend the money, let the GM do the thing. Like, let's go. This is and this get their so barn exciting. in Ottawa. Take their yeah. barn out of Canada and bring it closer to to where to, to downtown Ottawa <laughs> yeah. to get people there. Like, man, like if you're living in Ottawa, nobody's driving fuck fifty minutes to get to Canada in the middle of butt fuck nowhere to go watch yeah. the Sens play, right? Like, yeah. and then you wonder why it's empty. But man, like they are on, they're on a heater and. Man, this Atlantic division is becoming a fucking nightmare. Like, like we genuinely could have six teams in the next three years that are all playoff contenders. Yeah. Right? And, like, and with, like, Detroit coming up, Florida's just a fucking dumpster fire every year. So, I mean, you look at them aside, the, like, the Atlantic is just 
man, like second place in the Atlantic or third feels like first in any other division. Yeah. yeah. And that's going to get worse. It's going to get harder every year. It makes yeah. me think that Montreal should take their rebuild as slow as you can. Absolutely. Like, don't rush things because other guys are percolating right now. Uh huh. And you know you don't want to be in that dogfight. No, it's brutal. Oh my God. Yeah. It's brutal. And and with Chicker, and it's not only the player. I think it's just the contract too, right? It's it's Bang two on. more two more years of control after this yeah. at four point six, which is Peanut. crazy. Like like Pittsburgh got Mikhail Granlund, and they're paying him five mil a year. <laughs> Ottawa, Ottawa's chanting Chikrin for 4.6, and they're getting that for two more. It, it, it boggles my mind, and we'll get into Pittsburgh later. But the oh, point yeah. is, the point is, Ottawa, they get the great player. They get the control at a digestible yeah. rate. Uh, and, and they just, to me, they look like, there's, there's at the end, of you always look to see how teams are trending, how they're doing in their most recent few games. Yep. And in the last month, Ottawa is in a company of, like, Carolina, Rangers, uh, Colorado is they're in that company if you look at their win rate their their uh, their win percentage and so I, I I really do think at this point it's the, the the last spot in the playoffs that spot the Islanders have right now it's theirs to lose <laughs> I think it's Ottawa's to lose I think they have all the pieces now they have the momentum we've seen them do this with the Hamburglar yep. where they just get fired oh, at the right man. time and I I think Legend. this is this is their run this this is their run and I I, I think they're going to get that last that's that last spot that's my prediction yeah. and uh, I have no doubt saying that. Yeah wow. no I again completely agree I, I mean I think that every year you know like you go back ten years and think about all the teams that have won the Stanley Cup really the only team that didn't have unbelievable goaltending was really Colorado last year but they were just buoyed by an incredible defensive core that had fucking more points than, like, the entire, like, Detroit team put together. But other than that, it's like goaltending wins you championships, right? Go back how many years about, you know, whether it's Vasilevsky stealing it, whether it's Jonathan Quick stealing it, whether it's, you know, Jordan Bennington being virtually unbeatable. Find me one team outside of Colorado that had average goaltending and won a cup. It just doesn't happen. And I think that's why when I talk about these teams, like, you know, uh, the... Um, oh my God, they already escaped me. But all the teams we've spoken about, they need yeah. these goaltenders. Yeah, Buffalo, right? Ottawa. Yeah. Buffalo, Ottawa, New Jersey. These yeah. guys, if they get that 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 Vasilevsky quality, yeah. th- they're scary teams. Yeah, man. I mean scary they'll lose. They'll lose in the first round, and they'll Absolutely. lose to Boston. But I think their goaltending, like I think a Cam Talbot's good enough to at least get you in. And then, yes. and then, and now with Chikrin, yes. his his life will be made a little easier because you don't have Hopefully. fucking you don't have yeah. Nikita, Nikita Zaitsev in your Oof. in your defense pairs. You have Jacob Chikrin instead. I think that's a huge upgrade. Yeah, yeah, and, guys uh, that can play. And I I think it's just gonna help. So um, yeah, good on Ottawa, and I I, I, I sincerely uh, wish wish yeah. wish wish him the best here. Um, <laughs> okay, moving uh, just uh, you know two hours west. The Toronto Maple Leafs. Uh, we're 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 gonna we're not gonna you know <laughs> sum up one deal here because they did a lot. They yeah. they were the most active of any team, which is which is kind of refreshing if you ask me, John Ramo, as a Leaf fan. Yeah, 100%. You know, it's, it's good to see them actually do, do be aggressive at the deadline. Yep. And uh, in this case, I mean, where do you start? I mean, old news now, but they pick up O'Reilly. They they pick up Achari. They pick up uh, McCabe from uh, from uh, Chicago at uh, mm-hmm. three more years. Uh, they have him under contract for three more years at two million. Very digestible cap hit. They yep. get Sam Lafferty in that deal, who's kind of a bottom six checking kind of winger. Uh, yep. They flip Rasmus Sandin uh, in uh, in the Washington deal for yep. uh, for uh, uh, what's it say? Philip Gustafson on defense, puck yep. mover. And uh, and they they end up getting Luke Shen. They ship out Pierre Engvall. So it's basically Engvall out, uh, sh- uh, Sandine out. In comes Shen, Lafferty, McCabe, O'Reilly, and uh, Achari. I, I unless I'm missing someone there. And Gustafson, of course, coming in. So yeah. those are the big moves. They only give away a first, Sandine, and and, and Engvall. Uh, no goalies. They they stand pat on the goalie front. I yep. think that's about everything. I think I covered everything. They don't end up trading that first round pick that they got in exchange. Uh, yeah. Uh, that they got back, uh, which is good. That's Boston's pick, so it would have been a late pick anyway. Yeah. Uh, so they don't end up using that. So all of that said, uh, what what was your what was your, what's your impression of how uh, how uh, Kyle Dubas, young Kyle Dubas, made out on this deadline? So I here's what I think, right? Like given, you know, what the Leafs have gone through over really since they drafted Austin Matthews and since this era has begun, um, 
this is this is a signal that it's all in like this year like you have to win and there's and there's no questions asked you you've effectively built in my opinion the best team i've seen for the leafs on paper really since the austin matthews era um you know you get nola chari top 10 in hits you get lafferty first uh again like top 20 in hits you get luke shen first in the league in hits so they've gone out and said they've answered the bell in terms of what people and what the critics have said they're not tough enough they're not big enough right can they bang bodies against teams like boston right that are going to be nasty can they do that and what do you do you go out and you put achari and lafferty on the third line like that's that's heavy those top line guys don't want to play against that every single night and then you add ryan o'reilly who's got in, in in my opinion this is the one guy that that i was clamoring for before the deadline for the leafs to get because not only is he a leader but he's been there he's won the cup and he's just a guy that like man we're talking 70 percent on faceoffs. You know how hard it is to win 70% of faceoffs in the NHL against top line guys? Like, to have that flexibility of saying you got Matthews over 50%, Tavares, who he knows, you know, an elite faceoff guy, and you add in Ryan O'Reilly, like, they're going to win 70% of draws in playoff games. That should put them at an edge to win a good majority of games as long as they do what needs to be done when they get the puck. There's no questions now that they have the depth down the middle to do it. You've added toughness all around. And you've got guys that want to play that dirty, that grindy game. Like, I look at their last game against Calgary, and it's like, that is how every oh single playoff game is going to be. The way they defended there in the last they fucking answered five the minutes bell. of the third, there was not a it, single whistle, and it was just puck out no. of the zone every time. It was It perfect. was unbelievable. And it wasn't one of those last five minutes where you're like, fuck, like, you know, like Joseph Wall made a lot of big stops. It he didn't have to do tender. shit. They could have fucking put Joseph that. Wall on the – exactly. Yeah. They could have put anybody in there. They could have put anybody – they could have left him on the bench. But they just, they did such a good job. That was the best game I've seen Morgan Riley play all year. He was unbelievable. Finally moving the puck, skating, doing what he does best. I think now, if they play like the way they played against Calgary, and this is the new Leafs in that team, I don't give a shit if Matthews doesn't score a goal until the end of the year. All right, he's first in the NHL, I'm pretty sure, in terms of shots blocked for forwards. Like, who would even, like, he's just said, I can score 60, I don't need to, right? I can score 30, 40, and my team will be better defensively. And we might win something. And I think Matthews and Marner have looked at it this year and said, all right, the run and gun style we've done for this last five years has gotten us nowhere except for, you know, career years and, 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 and individual accolades. The moves they've made, in my opinion, have made them fully play already. They can go physically now against, I think, almost any team in NHL. They added grit, but guys with points. Like Lafferty's not like, you know, Wayne Simmons, five points in a season and likes to just throw the body around. Lafferty's got 25 points on the year. He can score a bit. He can pass a bit. He's physical. Luke Shen has become a whole new player over the last five years of his career. He's, he's sort of gotten better, you know, like as he's gotten older. I think the team is poised to win. And honestly, I think it has to be more than a round this year. It's like if you don't make the East Finals, I, it's just not doing it for me. This team is the best I've seen on paper. And the physicality for once, I don't think anybody can say they're not ready to play that physical playoff style hockey. They're ready to do it. Mentally, can they get over it? That's another question that has to still be answered. Well, that's a good segue to Kyle. Uh, I, I have a feeling you're going to be speaking from a different songbook here. Uh, the mental side, I don't think you think the Leafs have it despite these moves. Am I right? Well, I'll, I'll, maybe I'll circle back to that. I, but what I will say is the O'Reilly deal, love the deal. Absolute yeah. home run. I think this is the perfect guy for them. Mm-hmm. As, su- as recent as last playoff, like I watched him versus Colorado, and again, like, he, he's he's amazing at doing things like shutting down stars and obviously winning draws and that kind of thing. Like when him and McKinnon would clash, it, it was it was great to watch like what O'Reilly was able to do. Obviously, Colorado was just too much in every way. Yeah. But uh, what a player. I know he's had an off year. But mm-hmm. uh, you know what? You're not bringing him in to be this offensive guy anyways. That's, that's a great point. So what a, you know, if he's a third line center, what a guy to have if he's a second line center and Tavares moves over what a top six I like that flexibility that they have I think Mm -hmm. that's amazing uh I love that deal Luke Shen I love that deal as well that that's a no-brainer it didn't cost much I think he's a he's a good guy to have again they address uh what seemed to be a need which is that toughness factor I think Dubas has done a really masterful job at filling out the outer edges of this roster like the depth the surrounding players are really good uh in terms of the core forwards i mean like you know where i stand on that whether things have changed i think things feel a little bit different this year um 
it remains to be seen. We'll see what happens in the playoffs. Some some of those guys can come and go when it yeah. comes down down to crunch time. The main the main issue I have with this roster that remains um, is their what you call their core defense. I, I've never been yeah. a Morgan Riley guy. I, yeah. I'll I'll be upfront about that. I've never been a Morgan Riley guy. I like to say, good teams, like I said before, have defensemen that you can throw minutes at, minute munching mm-hmm. guys who can move the puck well, but also can just stomp defensive plays. Headman is is a great example of that Makar his offense makes up for <laughs> some of his de- his defensive uh, liabilities. So he's yeah. he's that guy. Um, Petrangelo was that guy. I don't know if Riley's that guy. Like, and that's not something you can necessarily address nope. this late in the build. But I just don't know if he can be that horse. Yeah. So uh, everything around him looks great, but it's going to be him at the end of the day who's getting the top minutes on defense, uh, and he's got to be able able to carry that mail. Um, I think goaltending is unproven, but seemingly fine. I can't yeah. quite comment on that. Um, we'll see what that does, but. Have they done enough? I think, man, like, I don't know. It's going to be a very close one with Tampa. I think oh, it's going to be very interesting. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if they finally break through. Um, but those concerns that I labeled out, uh, those do remain in my head, particularly Riley. As well, I, I know you complain about O'Reilly. Uh, sorry, Riley is the number one D, but can you, you know, d- the adage is, like, can't you defend as a team? You know, yeah, and the, Le- and the yeah. Leafs, the Leafs have done that, right? They've added Achari, they've added Lafferty, they've they've taken out the Engvalls, uh, you know, and and they've they've really made that bottom six a, a defense defensive unit, a forechecking defensive unit, defend in the other team zone. That's kind of what yeah. they're doing now. And and if those two first lines score, and then the bottom three just keep the puck out of the net and just grind teams, which is kind of what yeah. they're what they're doing with the, with these guys. This Sam Lafferty, this guy's quick. Th- yep. This guy in his that first game against Calgary, the way he was skating, I was like, "Holy shit!" Like no guy, char- no guy charges harder on a forecheck than this guy. This is yeah. incredible, and no wonder all these teams wanted him. They they outbeat Boston and Vegas for him, and and yeah. and, a- and Achari. You bet Vegas wanted him because Bruce Cassidy coached him for those years in Boston. Boston. He knows how good he is. So uh, in his character, like his interviews, he's just like another O'Reilly. I, I fucking love it. So they got the character now. They got the team defense with those additions. Uh, they got a plethora of, of defensemen they can move in and out, depending on what the matchup is against Tampa, you know, with Shen yep. and Gustafson. And, and McCabe, McCabe uh, you know, I don't know too much about him, but apparently he's, he's kind of the guy they've penciled in as a top four. Like he's like he's not going to be coming in and out for some reason. He already has the status of being a top four, so he must be good. You know, I don't I don't know. Got to watch more of him. See if he passes the eye test. But I like what they've done. I think I think um, you know I, I I can't think of a bad move Dubas has made here. They didn't give up Nyes. They didn't give up any other uh, notable defenseman or, or prospect, and uh, and they only had the one pick go. So I I think he gets an A plus. I think if the Leafs don't make it out of the first round and he's fired, he'll get a job very soon, shortly thereafter. And I think he's done his part. So now let's just put up our shut-up time. So, yeah. so if they do lose, does he get fired? We all agree he's done a good job. Like, So we, we had a – John Raymond and I were talking in the, ki- <laughs> the, wor- the, the, the company kitchen the other day about this. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And, uh, and a colleague of ours chimed in and said – Boys, I don't think he's fired. Uh, you know, I, 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 he said, boys, I think he's fired if they don't get out of the first two rounds. Yeah. So right. even if they beat Tampa, he thinks he's he, Dubas is done if they can't beat Boston in the second round, right. which I think's a bit of a stretch. I, I think if they get out of the first round, he's safe because Tampa yeah. is such it's yeah. such a ju- they're such a juggernaut. They've been the best team in the, in yeah. the NHL the last three years. If you can dethrone Tampa and you can finally break the curse, the first round curse, I think that's enough. Because he's made all these deals, which on paper everyone seems to be giving a thumbs up to. I can't think. I, no one, no one's shit talking these deals. No, and so, no. and so, I, I think just getting past the first would save his job. And 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 frankly, I think they're a better team than Tampa outside of the goaltending position. I, yeah. I think they just have the better team. It's just a matter of if the goalies can make the saves. Yeah, and and you know what? I think that you know the more you know that you you know, you know like even when you look at all the years you know, of, 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 you know, the disappointment for the Leafs, right? It's not like, I mean, outside of the Columbus year, which was a, a fucking debacle, but outside of Columbus, they've, you know, they've gone up against a team that's either gone, you know, to the Stanley Cup finals or have gone up against a team that's made it to the conference finals. 
it's not like they're facing teams. And this is why, again, we can have another whole debate on the playoff, you know, the whole uh, playoff format, which I think is stupid. But, you know, again, top for another day. I just think that, you know, you almost have to build your team now at the deadlines based on what you think you're going to play. And I think the Leafs looked at it and said, great, even if they beat Tampa, you're playing Boston in the second round, right? How are you going to keep up physically with that? Marshawn's a piece of work, right? And Bergeron seems to have every single number that the Leafs throw against them, right? Matthews and Marner, they, I'll be honest, they haven't really performed in the playoffs since they've been drafted, you know? Like, like, like Matthews hasn't lit the world alight. Marner's been okay, but he's disappeared at times. Like, it's just for them, mentally, Kyle, for me, like you were mentioning, it's that top six. I'm not worried about the other aspects. It's, it's can Matthew score in the playoffs consistently? Can Marner score? Look at guys that have gone on and won it. Nathan McKinnon scoring, Ranton and scoring, Crosby scoring. Every team that's won, their stars have scored. And the Leafs haven't had their stars yet step up in a playoff series com- continuously to a point where they're like, hey, they can win it. Did they outplay Tampa last year? On a balance of probabilities, maybe they edge them 51-49 in terms of who carried the play. But it doesn't make a difference. It's about whether you win or not. And I think this year, you can't really fault Dubas considering what he does. I agree with you. I've, I've, I like Riley, but he's not playing the role he's set to be. He's like a fantastic number three on a team or even a number two that's playing beside a really good number one. And I think you're right. They're missing that. So can they collectively defend enough to make up for Riley's deficiencies? Maybe. Riley's horrific on the power play, which is, I think, why they brought in Gustafson, who's got like close to 40 points this season. He's a power play guy. And I think the move is to eventually replace Riley. But it's like, you look at it and it's like, every team that's got that defenseman has really drafted it. The Leafs haven't been in a position where you can say, you know what, they should have taken a defenseman. Like, you look back and think of when, when they drafted Nylander, when they drafted Marner. You're telling me you would have taken Noah Hannafin over Mitch Marner? No. no. Right? So what other defenseman could the Leafs have drafted given their position? First, you're taking Matthews, obviously. You know what I mean? Yeah. Nylander, you're obviously taking Nylander now with the way he's developed. So the Leafs haven't had the chance to draft a Kale McCarr and Alex Petrangelo. Like, they haven't had that opportunity. So for the Leafs, it's like, how do you go and trade for one, right? Yeah. No team's ever really traded for a top one or that, you know, elite world-class defenseman. So for the Leafs, they've had to make do and kind of build through the sum of their parts rather than individually. So as much as everyone's like, oh, Leafs don't have a number one D, yeah, of course, because they don't fucking grow on trees. Like, you have to genuinely draft them. Or you can be like New Jersey and get Dougie Hamilton as a free agent or make a trade. Like, it's just difficult, right? And the Leafs haven't been in a position where they can trade for one of those guys, right? And then when Petrangelo comes up, am I giving, you know, almost $10 million to a 31-year-old free agent defenseman? No, of course I'm not. Because in five years, it's going to be an impossible contract to move, right? So the Leafs have had to make do. Goaltending, you're right, big question mark. In terms of Samsonov's abilities, I don't know. There's something about him where when he's on, he's on. He's great. But there's something about him where he kind of swims in the crease a little bit. And when he gets beat, it's a lot of five hole because he's down already. It's a little bit of, you know, he stays on his knees and he's sliding in positions when he's not. He sometimes overextends. If he can stay composed and play within his crease, he'll be fine. Question is, is can he do it in the playoffs, right? And the Leafs don't really have that. And I think that's why Matt Murray was brought in because his playoff record and track record is so good. But will he be healthy enough or will he have the form? will even have the game time to play. I don't think so. I don't think he sees the ice, personally. Unless he goes on a really good run now. We'll see. There's just so many question marks still. That's to a be, lot of money paying a goalie if he's not going to play a single minute know, in the playoffs. I, I don't, I I don't like that. I know. <laughs> That's He'll the play. thing, though. He'll play like, a little. It's hard. He, he ran out his time in Pittsburgh because, obviously, he had injury trouble and all that, but uh, yep. his, his playoff record started to quickly diminish. And yep. I don't know why he hasn't been that same guy. I think, you know, his, his father passed away, and it seemed like Big he was point. never the same. It's Big like he point. He was never the same. So uh, my, what I worry about with this Leafs goaltending is – since they don't have uh, – Murray's – he's got the experience for sure, but yep. he's shaky in terms of his mentality. Mm-hmm. Samsonov, who knows what he is, but, you know, it's going to be the most high-pressure situation either oh, yeah. has ever been in, probably. <laughs> Murray, like, Stanley Cup final, sure, that's different. But uh, it just seems like one of those guys is, like, you know, uh, leaving themselves open for the curse to set in on, 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 their, <laughs> on their play, you know? I if couldn't it's agree be more. someone, right – the curse is going to attack those guys. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So that's what worries me about that too. Yeah. Just like but. last year, man, like they played well, but when Jack Campbell needed, and this is the thing, like as a goalie, you know, like the 950 or, you know, the 930 save percentages, like Linus Olmark this year, it looks great. 
but you can have a fucking 880 save percentage, but if you make the big saves that need yeah. to be made, your team wins. And last year, Vasilevsky wasn't unbelievable in the first round, but when it push came to shove, he made the saves that wins Tampa the round. Jack Campbell couldn't do that. It's yeah. as simple as that, right? Because I don't think the team played bad. I think the top six was good. They weren't great, but they were good enough to win a nitty-gritty series against Tampa. But when you needed Jack to make the one save, he couldn't do it. The question is, is can the Leafs for fucking once in seven years or six years, can they get the goaltender that can just make the one save that they need to win and push them? Can somebody step up and make the big play? I don't know. And Kyle, I have the same reservations as you. Um, it's nice to hear a Habs fan that's actually, you know, objective and that actually understands the game and isn't just, you know, bashing because of the jersey. But it, it's all like, all, like honestly, man. Like I think you're a Leafs fan if I didn't know because it's 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 they're all great points and there's nothing there that sticks out to me as being some egregious take. Like everything uh, is a valid criticism. So I'm just objective, yeah. man. Like you, you, like look at Joe. I appreciate Joel, that. I Joel do. Is... I appreciate it. <laughs> Yeah, we have, we have a we have a friend of, we have a friend of the show who would say the exact opposite right now, but oh, yeah. we'll leave we'll leave he, that for him to defend himself. <laughs> yeah. All right, he's on the show. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, no, like like Joe. I think Joe maybe recognizes that I'm objective, but Joe is the absolute opposite of objective. <laughs> like he will say, the Habs will make the Cup final, and they'll be like, you know, they lose in six games. He'll be, and he'll say, absolute garbage franchise, worst team in the playoffs by far. And it's like, buddy. They're in the finals. How can you chirp when that you you lost in the first round? Like, it's that's just, what Twitter's for, man. That's what Twitter's for. Get behind yeah. a profile. Talk yeah. as much garbage as you want. It blows me away. <laughs> oh man, just just oof. And and one last thing on the Leafs as we're talking about goaltending. I don't know if this is a hot take or not, John Ramo, but I think just yeah. pure pure technical, you know, game and and just how how he looks in the crease. I think Joseph Wall might be their best goalie. I just think oh, yeah. he might he might not see time because he's inexperienced. Yeah, and, and he's a guy that I since the Leafs drafted him. When I watched him at the World Juniors back, I want to say in 2015 or 2016, uh, he was drafted the same year as Matthews. But he was a guy that I was always kind of high on because I think his mechanics are really good. Like his underlying abilities there. The question is, is will it translate? For a lot of guys, it doesn't. But goalies develop at random rates, and it's the most yeah. arbitrary position in the league outside of maybe five goaltenders we can list. It's a crapshoot every year, right? Like Nick Meany spoke about earlier. Jacob Markstrom is a guy that last year was a Vesna caliber goaltender. This year, the guy can't stop a beach ball. We're talking an 889 save percentage on Jacob Markstrom. Like, wow. like, it, like it, it's just unbelievable. And goalies go through this all the time. Some, they, like, they come and go, right? Like the Hamburglar looks uh-huh. unbeatable in the next superstar. And then the next thing you know, the guy's fucking doing, you know, he's, he's online trying to make a living because he can't stop a beach. Like, it's goaltending switches. <laughs> Right, And I feel bad because obviously I've played in those positions and I know and I've seen a lot of goaltenders. Like, man, Spencer Martin, when I played, was beyond unbelievable. Like, I thought this kid was going to be a genuine superstar in the NHL and he's barely keeping his head above water. Like, that's how difficult it is as a goaltender and that's how challenging it is. And I think that outside of Shesterkin, Sorokin, Vasilevsky, by the way, there's a trend we're starting to see here that it's, the NHL has been taken over by Russian goaltenders, right? Yeah. And if you guys have time, I can get to that later because it's a really interesting <laughs> fact. But there's a reason why they're so dominant. Um, but the one thing I'll say about Samson, I and mean, Nick, I completely agree. He's got it. And I've always said this. You don't get drafted in the first round as a goalie unless there's something there. And Samson is 25 years old, which I think a lot of people forget. He's not even wow. close to his prime yet. He's a guy where you stick with him and he continues to develop and to play the way he has this Wall season. or Samsonov? Samsonov in this interest. But okay. I'll get back to Wall in a minute. In terms of Samsonov, he's got that first-round pick pedigree. He costs you nothing to keep because he doesn't have any leverage in terms of contract. But he's had a good year. If this continues to develop, he's 25 years old, right? Like, you can't go wrong with a guy like that. But going back to Wall, he needs more game time. And I think next year he'll get it because I don't think Murray or Samsonov probably – I mean, I don't know if they'll keep both, but I'd like to see Wall – he looks unbelievable in that. He's calm. He's composed. And, man, he's played – like, every game he's played, he's, he's looked like a guy that's played in this league for 10 years. And you don't see that often with young goalies. But he looks ready. I want him to get a shot. Question is, is how do you do it? What are you supposed to do? Tell Matt Murray, our $5.5 million goalie, that he's going to be a scratch for Joseph Wall? No. Yeah. And for Samsonov, he's, he's got a 9-18 save percentage this year. Like, top 15 in the NHL. Like, he's done nothing wrong to give it up. So, I feel bad, but he's he, he's got a shot, Nick. You're right. He's got something there, and I hope in the future we see more of him. Yeah, I, I just think if there's a, you know, if, if foreseeably Murray gets injured, can't play in the playoffs, which, you know, obviously could happen, and then Samsonov yeah. struggles, 
I, I, yeah, would have no, be... I would have no fear in throwing whole, uh, Wall out there instead of some guy they would have picked up at the deadline, you know? Nick, I've seen so many disaster classes in net for the Leafs literally since I've been watching them, whether it's fucking Justin Pogge, whether it's... It, there's just been shit goaltenders for years, right? Like, to see Joseph Wall as a prospect we've developed finally make it through and actually look good, I'd be totally okay with him getting a start in the playoffs. Sometimes that inexperience and being naive could help. Because I can tell you, Samsonov's going in shitting bricks. Because all the eyes will be on the Leafs goaltending. If they lose, that's all people are going to talk about. No goaltending, couldn't do this, couldn't be Vasilevsky. So, we'll see. But hopefully he steps up. And if not, if they have to start Wool because he shits the bed, I'd start him. I'd give him that chance and say, now this is it. This is your make or break now as a goaltender. This is your chance. Can you take it? Um, moving right along to their playoff rival who they will face in the first round. <laughs> uh, that's already been determined. Uh, Tampa, they make their move. You know, every year, Brandon Hagel, uh, the, the, the guy from Ottawa, uh, oh, and the name eludes me right now. Blake uh, Coleman, Blake Barkley Co- Goodrow, yeah, yeah, all, these guys. all those guys. They, they, Nick they, Paul. Nick Paul, that's the guy. They, uh, they finally use, they use their gun in the chamber, their, their bullet in the chamber this time. And it's, uh, it's Tanner Janot. They gave up a first, a second, a third, a fourth. And a fifth. Um, unprecedented amount of picks for a guy who yeah. only has four goals this year. Um, Kyle, I know we like to give Tampa the benefit of the doubt here, given <laughs> how, how much all these trades have worked. Like, every trade that guy, Breezeball, makes works. It, it, it works yep. in the playoffs. So Nick Paul emerged last year against the Leafs. Everyone was bowing down to that guy, you know? So I ask you now, yeah. you know, with, with the, with the Breezeball, with his, with his resume, but also with how much they gave up here, did the Tampa Bay Lightning give up too much? Uh, I'll say absolutely not. I know that's kind of going against what people have been saying, and that like people are saying, oh, they gave up the whole draft class. You know what though? Like, what to to a team like Tampa, who it sounds to me like they want to go for it, you know, like they are for the next couple of years. The the first round pick they get up is a twenty twenty five. Do you think they care about that? And then you've got second, thirds, fourths, and fifths, no. and, and Cal Foot. Like Tanner Janot is is, is going to be an awesome third line player for them. If anyone can unlock who this guy is, it's Tampa Bay. He's cool. like he was either born to be a, a Lightning or a Bruin, and it's, <laughs> it, 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 it's it's come to fruition. I don't, I absolutely for a team like this, don't mind giving up that kind of draft capital, especially when you think that you know what the way I look at it, a first a late first rounder you might at best want to turn that into a middle six guy. Yeah. A second, third, fourth, you're looking at probably bottom six if you can. And uh, you know what? They've, they're they turning that into actual bottom six guys, middle six guys. So I got no issues with that whatsoever. They know exactly who they want. They've probably studied and scouted this guy like crazy. Yeah. They know exactly what he brings. Um he can score goals. We saw his impressive year last year. I know he's had a bit of an off year, um, but this is their guy. They got him. I, I don't think they care about the draft capital. Neither do I. Uh, if they can turn that capital into actual players in the, in the again, the fringes of their roster, the core yeah. is done, all, all, obviously, then do it, man. That capital is to be used to make outer roster guys, and they've done that. Yeah. So I think all power to them. Uh, and what's a fifth and a fourth to a team like Tampa? Like, yeah, you know what, Kyle? I mean, if it if if it was, and and this is the other thing, because I agree with you, I don't think it's a lot to give up for a player like him. And I and and I say this for one main reason in particular: if there's any team that knows how to draft with lower picks, it's Tampa Bay. Yeah. Like like if there's one team I trust to give up capital, it's Tampa Bay. Like they've been there, they've done it. You know, you get guys like Braden Point in the second, third round. Like man, these guys like they know how to draft. And I think that when you have that, I'm not afraid to give up that capital. And I'll be honest, I love Nashville as a team. I love the fan base. I love the, I love the energy. I want them to do well with this trade. So I think it works well for both teams. They get a lot for Tanner Janot, but they get, like, even if two picks hit, it's a slam yeah. dunk, yeah. right? So I got no problems with it. And Tampa Bay, who, like, who's going to question Tampa Bay? Whatever they've done is turned to gold. You know what I mean? Like, they've never made a bad move that hasn't looked bad, whether it's you know, whether it's like Savard on the back end, who people thought they gave up a lot for, or Goodrow or Coleman, year after year, it's home run after home run. 
Is it a lot? Yes, of course it's a lot, right? In the grand scheme, when you compare to other trades, it's a lot. Yeah. But it's Tampa Bay, and their window isn't forever because Stamkos isn't getting any younger. You know, you got Kucherov who's going to be 30. You got Stammer who's in his 30s. Hedman's in his 30s, right? Really, other than Point and fucking G and 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 uh, what's his name, a uh, Sorelli, the core is starting to age, right? Yeah. So they got to go and get as much as they can now, right? So I have I have absolutely no qualms with it. If it's Tampa. Like, I trust it. And they've earned that trust because results have spoken and they've proven it. So I have no problems with it. I think it's a great move for Tampa. And you don't think that move was in response to the Leafs getting O'Reilly and Achari and Lafferty? Tampa knows they got to get a little tougher, right? Because, you know, Corey Perry, whatever. He's like the fakest hard man in the league, whatever. Like, I'll give him credit. He's a great, you know, right? He, right? Like, he's a great player, but he likes to stir the pot, but he won't actually get in. Lafferty going up against a guy like Jano, like, man, there could be fireworks in this first round because there's a lot of guys out there that like to get nasty. Yeah. So I, I think it was a responsive move from Tampa to keep up with the Leafs, but I got no qualms with what they gave up, man. It's a great move. And Tanner Jano's what, 25, 26, I think? Yeah. I guy's got years and years to play. You have absolute, like, it's not like you're trading that for, like, a 36-year-old grinder. Like, we're talking about a guy that's got potential to play top six, to make low-end top six, but a definite top nine forward, 100%. Yeah, yeah. I I think with these picks and these teams trading these picks, it's all time and place, right? Like Absolutely. For, for, for for one team, that might be a lot of assets to give up. Uh, yeah. You know, if if you're San Jose and you're giving up a first, a second, third, a fourth, oh, a fifth, yeah. that's, that doesn't make any sense. But if you're Tampa and you've already proven that you are this elite echelon team, you're at your kind of mm-hmm. swan song of Stanley Cup competing here. This yep. is kind of your last shot at the bar here. Um, yeah. I, I, I think, you know, uh, fuck it, give away whatever assets you have to, because you're just trying to keep that window open. You've been, you've been, uh, you know, the definition of greatness these last three years and to make yeah. it four or five with one of these players, you do it. Even if it takes a first, second, third or fourth, third, fifth. so it's all time and place. And I think they're just, they're just doing what's right for their team at this point. So I don't think we Bang can on. give them criticism. And I think, and you know, given his track record, I think he will score a big goal against the Leafs or two or three, you know, of I hope. Course, not, I hope not as a Leaf fan, you know, I really don't, <laughs> but, uh, but it's probably going to happen given how oh, yeah. this guy's track record. Yeah. So, yeah. uh, anyways, that's and, Tampa. Uh, yeah. L- go on. Kyle. Low cap hit on Tanner's, you know, extremely low. It's like 800,000. Yeah. Is yeah. that for one more year though? Is, is he on an yeah. expiring deal? Okay. So I think, I think he's is. still on the ECL, right? Yeah. Yes. But, but they have a history of keeping guys there. They love playing there. They love re-signing. They signed Nick Paul. You know, they extended him. Uh, and, and I expect the same will happen with him if he, if he plays well in the playoffs. So, and Saskatchewan um, boy. So. No, that's good. Yeah. That always it's counts like, for something, right, Kyle? In the, in the char- rap, checks the rap. character box. <laughs> and you know what? One last point on that is that Tampa Bay seems to get hometown discounts on everybody. Everybody's always willing to take a little bit less than Tampa. Yeah. So I'm sure ta- – I'm, I'm sure – I'm sure – that uh, uh, Tanner Geno will be there for a while because he'll be willing to take less to keep that core, which I hope I can say the same for the Leafs in the next few years. But those Tampa guys took a lot less to stay, and that tells me that it's that it's a place guys want to be. Um, next move, their rivals, who they'll play in the second round, Boston. They end up oh. getting uh, they end up getting Tyler Bertuzzi for a first oh. rounder and a fourth rounder for Detroit. I know you know uh, this was this was kind of unexpected because he wasn't really on the trade bait board. Was he going to go? Was was it was he going to go? Was he not going to go? Um, you know, big time player seems to fit that Bruin mold of being just a uh, you know in your face kind of tough guy, but can also score oh. has some punch. I'm scared. I have a feeling if the Leafs match up against this team, he he's gonna he's gonna be like he's gonna be like the Jake DeBrusque, you know, a few years ago when when he really got to us. He's he's gonna be Can like I that kind of guy. He he's gonna score some big goals, and I'm gonna fucking hate this guy. And I'm gonna look at his yeah. toothless grin, and I'm gonna want to punch him in the face. I'm getting I'm getting yeah. the goose goosebumps with this guy. Do you agree, Kyle? Yeah, man. T- Tyler Bertuzzi is an awesome player. Awesome player. You were quick and, and to snag yeah. him in fan. He's in our fantasy league. Kyle snagged yeah. him right away after the deal. Yeah. So and and it's funny. The Bruins are so interesting because like they have some of the most unlikable rats in the game, Bertuzzi Fuck. and and Marshawn. But then they also have some of the highest character guys we've seen in in Bergeron. So it's like <laughs> it's such a an interesting room in there. Like it's it's really the cool. The perfect again, mix. I, yeah, a, a guy who is just going to be a great Boston Bruin, especially as like a guy who's who's put up near point per game season or two in the third line. Like, come on, this guy is just this guy is awesome. 
Um, and it just like you know what you mentioned it earlier about Chikrin. Like wh- if it all it took was a 2024 first, yeah, and whatever the hell else they gave, fuck, um, a fourth. Like this guy could have been so good for so many teams. Oh. How, why was it Boston? You know, fuck. like come on, man. That would be that would look good on anyone's third line on on someone's second line that would look good so it'd be, it'd be a great like where's line. where's Boston getting all these first round picks for because they traded one for the Garnet Hathaway deal the one that the Leafs now have and then they traded another first round picker for for Bertuzzi I don't know where they're getting all these firsts from I think I the know. first for Bertuzzi was the year after but man wh- yeah. like yeah what, I what guess, is, I and, guess and, just yeah. I I mean listen like it might be like a hot take but I hate Boston more than I hate the Habs. Um, and like, and it, it, honestly, it doesn't even have anything to do with the playoff history. It just has to do with their fans. They're so right. th- like, they're, they're just irritating. Whether it's the Red Sox, any Boston team, I can't stand the fans. And I, I that's why I want the team to fail. I love Bergeron. I love Marshawn, even though he's a huge rat. If he was on my team, um, and, and, and everything he's done for like team Canada, like, man, I, I, like I cheer loud when he scores goals for Canada. Cause he's just that type of guy, but yeah, what a move for Bertuzzi. Um, Bertuzzi's a 95, so I had the chance to play against him in, in minor midget. He's a Sudbury kid, wow. uh, and he played and he played for the Sudbury Wolves AAA team. The biggest pain in the ass on the ice, I am <laughs> telling you. Like even like even me as a goalie, like when we played against him in tournaments, and he was really the only time you'd see him is in tournaments, right? Because yeah. GTHL is not playing out in Sudbury. But my God, was he he stood out like he was just a guy. He still had that same hair. He's been missing that tooth almost like since he was 15. <laughs> And he was just a complete a menace on the ice. It was a dump, and it was no breaks. It was through the guy into the boards, get the puck, and go through the goalie and put it in the net. And you just wow. and you couldn't deal with it. And he plays the same way in the NHL. He can fight. He can hit. He can score. I mean, he had, like you said, he was a, almost a point-per-game player last year in Detroit. There's a reason Dylan Larkin's crying in his interview <laughs> for how much Bertuzzi means. Like, like, that's the type of guy he is in the room. It's the type of guy he is on the ice. And he's the type of teammate that you want in the playoffs. Because there's one guy you want to back you up. Tell me you don't want fucking Tyler Bertuzzi Fuck being it. your fucking wingman. Come on. Like, imagine him. Like, like, I think of on the Leafs. Like, imagine throwing him beside Marner and Bunting. Like, him and Bunting just fucking riling guys up for 60 minutes. And then just yeah. feeding the puck talk. Like, he's a guy that, go, like you said, Kyle, every team could want this guy. Yeah. Without a doubt. Everybody wants him. He, he's an, it's an unbelievable pickup for Boston. Unbelievable. When you think of a playoff ad, like a deadline ad, let's gear up for the playoffs, it's this guy. Mm-hmm. It's this guy. I hear you. I hear you. Absolutely. And, he, and the scary thing is he doesn't even have to play in the top six, you know, so that just shows no. their depth, you know. Yeah. That's what's yeah. crazy. This is a this is a top line top power play guy for the Detroit Red Wings, and yeah. now he's going to be a third liner second power play guy for Boston. It's just like it's him, just Zaka, and Charlie Coyle. Yeah. Like, come on, man. Like, that's fucking yeah. unfair on a third line. Like, yeah. it, it, it's ridiculous. Yeah. 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 Well, that's Crazy. why the Leafs set got out and got Ryan O'Reilly, right? Because if you, if you do you possibly put him on the third line, you, yeah. need, you, need, yeah. you need to match up. Um, yeah. And again, with all, with all these firsts flying, I think it's the same thing with Tampa. I think it's Boston's management saying, we got to reward Bergeron here. It's his last last dance. And uh, we got we gotta so to we gotta shell out these picks, you know? I love that, that, that narrative's kind of we we've lost that since the first uh, the bit of the season is that whole last dance uh, yeah. storyline. I don't know if that's been talked about enough because nope. I mean, look at what they've been able to do with it. We didn't yeah. think they'd be this good. Krejci no, comes back from it's Europe. a historic winning rate. At this rate, like, they, you know, they will they will have the best winning rate since the Habs in like the seventies. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's like, absolutely mind boggling. I don't know. The, the hockey gods are smiling yeah. on this last yeah. uh, last yeah. run. Yeah, it's it's really interesting. Um, okay, uh, moving on. Some quick ones we'll go through, but before we get there, uh, I need John Ramos' take on this. We spoke about him earlier. I'll just call this one Jonathan Quick. So it's it's very it's very odd. So he goes from Man. L.A. to Columbus. He he doesn't even last there for a day, and then he quickly goes to Vegas. So in the Columbus deal, it's yeah. quick. It's quick in exchange for uh, Gavrikov. Uh, Corpus Allo, and then of course LA giving up uh, some picks. I, I I have it here. It's uh, it's uh, Is it a second. Yeah. Um, what do we got here, Jonathan? I got the second the second pick where he goes. For, oh, here we go. 
We got uh, John, we got Corpusol and Gavrikov to the Kings in exchange for Quick, a 2023 conditional first and a 2024 third round pick. So a first and a third and Quick in exchange for Corpusol and Gavrikov, and then later, uh, like I said, not even 24 hours later, uh, Quick goes to the Knights in exchange for a seventh and Michael Hutchison, uh, good old Leaf. Uh, oh, so, yeah. yeah, I know. He's still around. It's crazy. Yeah, um, so, 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 so there you have it. Um, I'm just going to call this one Jonathan Quick. What it, uh, I guess my first question is, uh, do the Kings benefit from Corpus Allo, given, you know, uh, they think that's an upgrade over Quick? Uh, did they give up too much for him? And lastly, uh, does, does, does Quick still have enough in his game to lead Vegas on a historic playoff run here? It's, it's, it's so tough. But you know what? I'll say this. Jonathan Quick was always my idol growing up as a goaltender, and for everything he's done in this game, um, he's borderline Hall of Fame. And I, I sometimes I even say it just because of the two Stanley Cup runs. Oh, but he will be. He will be. Like as a consummate professional, that's a huge loss in that, and it's a huge loss in that Kings locker room. Like you have a team that's going to the playoffs in the Kings. They play a good style of hockey, and it's a guy that he's won with Drew Doughty. He's won with Kopitar. That's a tight knit group. I think that's tough to break that up going into the playoffs he's a guy with experience yes the numbers haven't been there but he hasn't really been healthy for a lot of this year I think it's a big loss for the Kings and I'm surprised they were willing to part with quick like that considering they're going to go on this playoff run Felix Copley the other goalie or Phoenix Copley who's been playing there has been good but again it's that same issue quick has pedigree and maybe I'm overstating it because I just love Jonathan quick you know as a goalie and as a professional but I think it's a great move for the Vegas Golden Knights. I think they've kind of struggled in that goaltending department this year. It's been a little bit of a revolving door. They haven't had a lot of guys healthy. If Quick can just get on a good run, and we all know he can because he's done it before, forget his age, forget everything. He's a guy that's built for these big moments and has helped his team get there. Great, great ad for Vegas. Is it a lot to give up? Maybe, but I think they paid really more for Gavrikov and to get the other pieces, so it kind of made sense from L.A. to improve that, but just... Like, as a guy, to lose that in the L.A. locker room is tough because he's got a lot of friends on that team and a lot of guys that they've done a lot with. So I think it's tough to break that up, but I'm sure they would have done their homework and made sure that... And, and, and I can almost guarantee you the GM would have maybe went to guys like Doughty, guys like Kopitar, and said, hey, we're thinking of moving quick thoughts because these guys read the room. They're their two leaders, right? It's the captain and the other guy. I'm sure they would have had a say in this and made sure that this was a deal guys were okay with because it's a big piece to lose in Jonathan Quick. But again, a great move for Vegas, depth, a guy who's been there, and they need it, and they need goaltending. In terms of Corpus Allo, like you mentioned for the other part, great move. I think that Corpus Allo's been good. He's been hamstrung by playing on a really shitty Columbus team for a lot of years, and we've already seen that with Murray, how leaving Ottawa with the terrible defense core before all the moves Dorian's made, of course, a shitty defense core made him look terrible, and the passing of his father obviously caused you mentioned a huge role, but... Beyond that, it shows you what a bit of a better defensive core can do. And Vegas has a nice D core. It's nice. It's older, but it's nice, oh, and they play well. I think it's okay, arguably I the best of the league. Shea Theodore is so I do, underrated. I do, I do. And does not get the credit. Shea Theodore doesn't get the credit he deserves. But I think with a better D core like that, he'll be good. Uh, so great move. But Corpus Allo, great signing. I think he's going to do much better in L.A. with a D core that can play. Um, and honestly, he's a goaltender that he, he kind of goes about his business quietly. You know, he's a guy that does it every single night. He may not be elite, but he's not shit. He's kind of in that middle ground. And it's the same thing with Samsonov. Can he now do it in the playoffs? We saw what he did to the Maple Leafs before, right? In that, right? Like in that play-in series. Him and Elvis Merzlinkins, whoever it was, the goalies that, they were gross and stood on their heads. He, if he can get to that level every night, it's going to be a great move for L.A. for years to come. Uh Vegas, Golden Knights, Alex Petrangelo, Shea Theodore, uh, Alec Martinez, Braden McNabb, Zach Whitecloud, Nick Hague. Best 6D in the league. That's my hot take, Kyle. Ooh. That's <laughs> tough. That's a really tough one. I mean, yeah. Come on. Yeah. That's, I, could Nick, play, that's I, tough, could, I could win a cup behind those six. Nick, I, I, I think so. That's tough. The age, man. The age. I don't that's care. Sweet. I don't care. It's not going to age well, those six, you know. But I think just for this year, just for this cup run, I think Quick is situated in a atmosphere where he can really bring them on a run. And I would love to see him play L.A. And I would love to see him stick it to L.A. I would love to see Ooh. nothing more. That's the way it's looking right now. <laughs> if they play, I think that would be an incredible matchup. And, and honestly, I think Vegas is the biggest winner of these three teams, of Columbus, L.A., Vegas, because they give up seemingly nothing 
for a yeah. guy who can have a lot of upside potentially. You know, for a big, uh, pro. For a, for a big pro, lots of upside, yeah, yeah, yeah. and gives insurance behind. You know, as well as uh, as, as as well as uh, you know, Aiden Hill has played, and as much as Logan Thompson was an All Star this year, unproven yeah, track yeah. record. You know, like y- you kind of sweat a little if you're if you're Vegas's management and that owner Foley, who's who's how- you know, like I'd be sweating. But you get quick now. And it's that perfect veteran to just insulate yeah. those guys. Yeah. I, I think I think I, I really like what they did here. And and you know, LA they get they got Corpusalo, sure, but he's not a stud. He's not a fucking superstar. He's not one of those Russians. Yeah. And they give up a first and the third. So my winner here of these three teams is Vegas. Yeah. So I got a question for both of you. What yeah. is your percentage of certainty that Jonathan Quick will be the starter in Vegas? Come playoff time. So for me, I would say if Thompson can't play, then he starts. Like 110% he starts. But I think if Thompson's ready, I mean, at the end of the day, Thompson was an all-star, right? You cannot take away an opportunity from a guy like that to play in the playoffs. But if he's not good to go, can you hang your hat on the performances of Jonathan Quick at his age and the way his body's degraded? No. But can you sure as hell know that he's going to give it 110% every game? Absolutely. And, and we still know he can come up with that stop where your fucking jaw drops and you're like, how the hell does he stop that? Like, how does he get – he yeah. can still do that. And all he needs is a couple good games to get rolling and to get on a good feeling. And if he does that, I hate to say it, but Thompson won't see the net for, for because me, yeah. you do not change it. For me, quick is that goalie I pick if I if I just have to win a playoff series. You know, yeah. like I don't think he plays well over a whole season because, to your point, his body's broken down. In he the can. last in the last five seasons, he's had a save percentage below nine hundred three times. Yeah, three of the yeah. last five years. Vegas saw how he, uh, sorry, LA saw how he was playing this year. And he just yeah. it wasn't cutting it, and I think that's why they shipped him out, despite the loyalty and how much those guys like Kopitar and Dowdy loved him. But yeah. I, I think it's a results-oriented business, and he wasn't bringing it over yep. 82 games. But in a playoffs, in a condensed schedule, where those yeah. defensemen, where there's six guys, are only letting 25 shots a game, I think Quick can can be masterful, and I I expect yeah. him I expect him to start in the playoffs if Logan Thompson yeah. can't go. I believe they got to reward Thompson because he's he's yeah. he's done this. They there is a to. there is a loyalty there. You got to reward yeah. him. But the exactly. second he cracks, the second there's a chink in the armor, like game one, game one, it's <laughs> Quick's crease from there. Yeah. So so Kyle, right. I with that caveat, I would probably say like 85 percent chance, 80 85 yeah. percent wow. chance. Jonathan Quick. What are your thoughts, good. Kyle? Um. Yeah, I mean, I mean, for I, the record, Kyle once on our one of our famous Rink Moose songs said Jonathan Quick is a schmo. So let's let, let's hear it, the, Kyle. That was more so to chirp you, to be honest. But. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, you know what the the goaltending thing, whether whether Jonathan Quick or or it's Aiden Hill or Logan Thompson, whoever it is, I just I I don't I got bad vibes about Vegas this year. I, I really do. If they play a team like – like, they could play Edmonton in the first round. That's I a think, tough matchup. I think they get clapped by Edmonton in the first round. Um, Ooh. I think Winnipeg is a tough out. Like, it's not – like, it's n- you're not going to face someone easy. Winnipeg's not team. beating Vegas. No, you never Ooh, know. Man. I don't know. You never know, I don't man. know. They've been on a really rough slide. But they have. But before that, yeah. they were really good. Their top six is still nasty. Their top yeah. six is still nasty. If I'm Vegas, I think I can beat anyone in that uh, anyone in that Pacific except for uh, Ed- Edmonton. Like uh, like Seattle doesn't scare me, and uh, and actually Calgary would scare me if they snuck in. But I, I don't. I, I th- if they play Seattle or L.A., I think Vegas gets gets through the first round. Well, the, and they're close, yeah. man. Like they right now, they lead the divi- the the conference in point for percentage. Yeah. But Dallas is right sneaking up behind them, so. Yeah, I they're mean, underrated. They, yeah, if they come second in, say they're the lesser of the two divisional champions, then they'll play in Edmonton as of right now. But ideally, you want to play like a Seattle, right? Seattle or LA, they'll win. If they play Edmonton or Calgary, yeah. they will lose. If they play someone from the Central, oh, they could probably Calgary. lose. Uh, that's a team I don't want to match up against in the first. I don't want Daryl Sutter. I don't want Daryl Sutter in the first round. <laughs> but you know what, though, like, you won't get it because they won't make it. <laughs> The other thing too is I just got some some gross feelings about Eichel too. Like I, I just, this guy, man, it's gonna be his first time in the playoffs. And I think I just I I I don't like this guy. <laughs> no, 
So he, him as your number one center, like it, it just gives me the the creeps, man. You know what my thing is too, like you know, like like the more I look at the West, and I'm like, Dallas has Jay Gottinger, and Jay Gottinger is fucking good. He's really like good. he's he's unbelievable. Edmonton's going in with Stuart Skinner and Jack Campbell. Honest to God, he couldn't stop a fucking puck on a mini stick net. Yeah. Like 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 this is the level we're at here. Is that you know if you look at Edmonton statistics, top ten and everything, they're fucking twenty first in goals against. Yeah. yeah, they're literally what the Leafs have done for five years, and it's never worked. But they get hyped because McDavid puts a fucking cloud over everything, and because it's McDavid, they can do it. They're no different than the fucking Leafs are. They're actually ten times worse because the Leafs could actually defend; they just yeah. couldn't get the stops. Yeah, right. Like Edmonton, just Darnell Nurse is the most overpaid defenseman in the league. Ekholm will help because he's a stay-at-home guy, but it's a long contract on an older defenseman. And Evan Bouchard has a slap shot, and that's about it. And then the rest of the core is like, what are you getting? Cody Ceci was getting bullied in Toronto, and yet on Edmonton, there's no real talk. I think they get a pass because of McDavid and Dreisaitl. But I look at Jake Ottinger, and I have to think, how does Dallas not win? Like, they play a good defensive game with Jake Ottinger, and they have just enough scoring that they can win a series. So I look at Dallas and Winnipeg, Connor Hellebuck. Like, they can make it to a cup final with Ottinger and Hellebuck alone. That's why I still look at them as being my two favorites in the West, aside from Colorado, obviously, because they're just filthy. But besides them, who can like whose goaltenders can really compete with Connor Hellebuck and Jake Ottinger? Like Stuart Skinner, maybe, but it's the same question as unproven, right? Yeah. I don't know. Like like even with Vegas, like you know, we talk about quick, but are you really willing to hang your hat on a thirty six or thirty seven year old Jonathan Quick who's injury prone against Connor Hellebuck? Right. I, 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 I hang my hat on the uh, on the def- de- on the defensive structure of Bruce Cassidy and a proven coach that has gotten his team to the cup final. And, and, and I, I think he can do it. And I think they, they added Barbachev. And I, I think, you know, I think yeah. they're still a little weak up front. But I think defense, goaltending, coaching, they got it. But I don't Where's know if they'll Mark score Stone enough. At? The probably yeah, exactly. Oh, man. They won't That's score a big enough. One. They won't score enough counting on a Chandler Stevenson no. and, and a William Carlson. To, to, to score every night. It's, it's Jonathan it, Marshall, like yeah. no Pacioretty, he's gone injured too. Like, like they're missing two big forwards, but, and that's what I fear. They might pump 40 shots a game, but we all yeah. fucking know Connor Hellebuck can stop 40 shots a game yeah. for an entire playoff series. He's that yeah. level. And it scares me. A, a, like a hot goaltender scares me. Look yeah. at Montreal when it was Terry Price against the Leafs. Yeah. Oh. And that's another guy, injury prone. But who's saying Quick can't do a price did and have that swan well, song last that's, run? That's what I'm like, saying. Th- this year's it's, it's Vegas, Vegas to me this year is like LA from 2012 and 2014. You know? Yeah, they got they, quick, 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 quick and goal, amazing yeah. defense, uh, yeah. a coach who can get them there, but not enough scoring. And Vegas that no. year, they didn't score on the power play. They never scored on the power no. play, but they would score two or three goals a game, and they kept it under that, and they somehow yeah. won those two cups. That's Vegas this year. I just In this today's NHL, I don't know if you can win that way. I think. By yeah, the way, 5-1 yeah. Dallas, in case anybody's interested. Yeah. Crazy. Against Colorado. What a Fucking statement. Fest, man. Yeah, what a, what a statement. 5-1. Fuck. Big statement. Uh, moving on, uh, Colorado. Uh, Kyle, I'm just going to throw three teams at you, three trades, so we can we can wrap these trades up. Sure. Avs get Lars Eller and Jack Johnson. Uh, Sabres get Jordan Greenway for a second and a fifth. And Penguins, like get, that. Penguins get Nick Benino and Mikhail Granlin. Those are kind of three of your teams. I want your quick thoughts on, on each one there. Which team improved the most? Which one improved the least? I think Pittsburgh is, is uh, doomed. Like, I, I think they're so, so, like, the, Hextall's got to be fired. Their bottom six is, <laughs> is putrid. Like you're one, of the, you're one of those fans at the Pittsburgh games yelling, fire Hextall? Is that you the other night? Absolutely. You're bang on. You're I would have been on. there, man. Yeah, like, this is just, this is putrid. Like, Brutal. you've got good seasons out of your, your core vets going on right now, and you've, did, yeah. you've done nothing to, to support them. The bottom six has been terrible. Uh, it's just it's and you haven't been able to go get over the first round hump. These guys, yeah, familiar face, Nick Benino, that's great. Sure, that's great. It's not going to be enough. Like I always pick them to get out of the first round. Always do. I can't do that this year. They're they're toast in the first yep. round. I'm sorry. Um, Colorado again, going with a familiar face, Jack Johnson. That's fine. Yeah, like get you know get that familiar familiarity back. Lars Eller, that's a good good depth ad. They mm-hmm. didn't do much. I wanted them to do a bit more. I wanted them to get another center, like a, another second line center. JT Confer is a pretty good, 
pretty good center, but it it scares me going in to to be honest. But I think obviously they're going to do some serious damage again with everyone healthy. Landis God comes back, everything changes. Um, they're going to be good. It's going to be tough for them to get to the finals this year, but they're going to be good. Agreed. Um, and what that about Jordan boys, Greenway to Buffalo? Jordan, that was a fantastic move. Love Fan, this move. Th- this guy, like, look at the Sabres' size. Like, they obviously have a plan in mind. They're all huge motherfuckers, man. Like, Thompson, Cousins, Todd, and young. Greenway. Another young guy Owen added power, to the mix. It's crazy. Like, talk about a power forward group. Like, large defensemen. This, this team's going to be excellent, excellent, excellent. They didn't give up much to get him. Um, I don't mind what they did in terms of not doing much at the deadline. Um, they didn't sell really. They didn't buy too, too much. Uh, they stick to the plan. And yeah. this guy, I think he could be part of the long-term plan. I think he's a, he's a really good fit there. He just looks like a Buffalo guy, you know? Yeah, I, I, I could walk into the anchor bar and see him munching on some wings. Can't you, Kyle? <laughs> Absolutely. And by the way, if it, if it does happen to be <laughs> Buffalo that makes it, because percentage-wise they're in. Yeah. Yeah. I would love to go to some of those games. I yeah. would love to go to some well, of those games. Well, that's the one that's going to tear at me is that one of Buffalo or Ottawa will get in and one probably won't. And whatever one doesn't, that's gonna, it's going gonna, it's gonna to eat at me a little bit. Yeah. And, I'm, yeah. and I'm torn yeah. over which one I'd rather have in. I, I think I'd rather have Buffalo just because the market. Not the Islanders. No, fuck no, the Islanders. Fuck the Islanders. Fuck the no, Islanders. No one wants oh. it. But, but I want Buffalo in for that market. And then, and then, yeah, Ottawa would be the consolation prize. Uh, yeah. what, do you, what did you think of those deals, John Ramon? One of those three stick out to you? Kyle hit the nail on yeah. the head on every single one. I, I mean, how you don't go all in when you're Pittsburgh with this core and give them the last dance, it's fucking disrespectful, man. They've, got, they've brought everything to Pittsburgh, and you're telling me that's all you can bring in? Like, Nick Bonino, good ad, but he's not the Nick Bonino when they won the Stanley Cup. Like, he's not that level anymore. How do you not give these guys what they need? It's terrible. Hextall's always been a shit GM. I mean, it just proves it. Just absolute nonsense for Pittsburgh. If I'm Crosby and Malkin, I'm fuming. Because how do you not are. add? They're so, they, they, and, 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 and they should be brutal. Colorado, you're right. I would have liked to see more. I think you have this core now. You've got to do what Tampa's doing, man. You've got to fucking get all the eggs in one basket because this league will kill you. Look at the Leafs. 60, 60 fucking years with nothing. That's how hard it is to win a Stanley Cup. Harder than any other sport. This isn't basketball where you can sign three superstars and they can carry you all the way. It's the hardest thing to win, and they've done not enough for me. When you have a core now, you got to go all in, and you got to get as many rings as you can while you're at it. They didn't do enough. And for Buffalo, my hot take is that in two years, they'll have the best decor in the league. I don't think anybody – I hope nobody disagrees with that. I think Buffalo can get there. Um, but I like that they kind of stayed pat because I think they're good enough to just – I think they're – are they better than Ottawa? I don't know. I think they're way better than the Islanders. The Islanders are just fucking like – like if it wasn't for Sorokin, they'd be fucking getting Connor Bedard. That's how bad they are. All right, Matthew Barzell is the most overrated player in the league, and I've been saying this for a long time. I don't think he's anywhere near good enough to be a 1C. But I would have to say Greenway, great move. He had a great year in Minnesota last year, and unfortunately one bad year cost him a spot there. But, man, you put him just in that top six to mix it in, like – the guy's the guy's a mo- oof yeah oof's the fucking right word man he, he it's it's a good move and again Buffalo they're getting there slowly but surely just get just more reliable goaltending and play that better defensive system a little bit tighter man they're scary they're they're they're, they're going to be scary but hot take for me is they're going to have the best decor in two years once Owen Power and by the way Rasmus Dahlin is my pick for the Norris I think if wow. it's anybody else it's wrong I've, I he has been I've he's been a fucking monster all season long. Really? Just that despite the Carlson resurgence? Don't care about Carlson's <laughs> resurgence. Honest to God, <laughs> listen, I love Carlson as a guy. I love him as a player. But Rosmus Dahlin last summer was being touted as a fucking bust because of how bad he was. And yeah, I was... He was. And, yeah, I was calling right. for, and I was calling for the Leafs to make a trade for him because yeah. I was like, his fucking stock is low. Give him a fresh yeah. start. The guy's unbelievable. He just needed that time to get going. And... Absolutely, for me, he's the Norris pick. I, I, I have no questions about that whatsoever. He's been unbelievable. Wow. Yeah, yeah I, I can't disagree. It's an underrated take. I haven't heard that very much. He's, but he's but looking at his numbers and the team success as opposed to San Jose, I think yeah. I think he's probably more deserving of it. I just think yeah. if I'm a betting man, the league's going to give it to Carlson just because of you know just the, how much of, of yeah. a comeback story that is. You know. But who's really been his partner? Like he hasn't had. And again, and you might say, yeah, whatever. He's played with Owen Power. 
Bruin Power is still in that rookie sophomore. Yeah. This is like a third year guy carrying a rookie. Like cut like yeah. like that's fuck like that's tough. And it's no disrespect to Kale McCarr because he's had another great year. But like Kale McCarr's been doing this for a while now. You've got to respect what Darlene's done on a team like Buffalo that's been yo yoing and he's kept their heads above water alongside Thompson. Yeah. Uh, how do you not give Darlene consideration this year for the Norris? I think it'd be disrespectful, honestly. Yeah, um, for sure. Yeah, and Power's going to be a horse as well. Oh man, he's a machine. My God, he's uh, got to figure yeah. it out a little bit defensively in terms of his defensive awareness. Yeah, for sure. But but a guy that size, is, and that's just time, right? Yeah, that's just time. Look at Darlene, man. We were saying the same things. He's got to figure it out defensively. He's yeah. got to figure. Out. Now this year, the guy's racking up points like it's nothing and shutting the biggest guys down. On yeah. the flip of a switch, like, respect to that, man, because he's great. He's great. Yeah. A stud. This uh, team is yeah. going to be so much fun. And I'm a oh, huge yeah. Jack so Quinn fun. fan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's been doing amazing lately. What a shot that guy has. Yeah, they need, they need, they need Alex Tuck back. They, 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 they need do. that guy back or else uh, it's going to be but even the prospects, But even the prospects, like, you look at Peyton, like, J.J. Paterka, if he gets going, like, man, there's some, there's some talent on that And Al team. Greenway's another guy, another young body infused in there. So, uh, no, it's yep. great. Um, yep, yep, yep. Okay, in the interest of time, winner and a loser. I want you to pick one winner, one loser from the deadline. Um, I'll begin by saying I think my winner, yep. without a doubt, is Ottawa. Um, I just think value-wise, the deal is just too good. It's a great player. It's control. He's only 24. Next two years at 4.6, you only gave up a first in two seconds. I think just that raw value, they got the best guy for the best price. Yeah. Uh, my loser, uh, Vancouver. I, I think, <laughs> I, I, don't know, I don't know what the fuck yeah. they're on. I don't know what they're on. I don't know what they're on there in Vancouver. Um, oh, but they give, up, they give up a first and a, uh, I think a fourth for, uh, for fucking Philip Pronick. Pronick. Uh, I just can't make sense of it. I, I am just I thought they had it right bringing in Tockett and 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 ta- and you know bringing in a new GM but this just looks like they're going to continue fucking that up. Uh, I just do not. Are you rebuilding? Are you not rebuilding? It makes like com- it, absolutely man, yeah. no sense. They already have a puck moving D in Quinn Hughes. You don't need another puck moving D, and you sure as hell don't need to be giving up more first round picks when all you need at this point are more more prospects. It makes no yeah. sense to me. I, I need help. I need a therapist to talk me through how this makes they, any sense. <laughs> they are turning into the Buffalo Sabers of the last five six years, yeah. where it's just it's just dumpster fire. It's it's incorrect. You got you got Oliver Ekman Larson making almost seven million dollars a year. The guy is dog. It's pure dog. <laughs> Terrible. You have Tyler Myers who was like again, just 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 you know, for an Italian term, he's skeeve. He's garbage. He's just he can't play. <laughs> That's and a new like, one. I've never heard that. Yeah. I like and that. you've done nothing to improve it, right? You right you keep J T Miller who's banging on boards and yelling at goalies. Brock Besser can't figure out if he wants to be a sniper, if he even likes playing hockey anymore. <laughs> Bo Horvat, who loved Vancouver and wanted to stay, and you fucking trade him because you won't give him the bag, but you give it to Mel. It, you know what? They almost deserve it because when you make this many mistakes, you know, it's not a mistake anymore. It's a pattern, and they've been mired in shit, and now they're going to fucking <laughs> reap the rewards of their terrible trade. So yeah. Vancouver, as always, continue holding gigantic L's. Yeah, brutal decision making, and and you know what? Unlike some of the teams we've talked about in the past, this yep. team is, it, it, they're far from being a contender. So so like their oh. forward core is is pitiful. They have Horrible. Pedersen. Talk about like a young core. This is going to be your guys going yeah. forward. Three four guys. You have Pedersen. J T. Miller's not that guy. He's not going to be a long term fixture. No. Nope. But Brock Besser's not that guy. Beauvillier is not that guy. Garland is not that guy. Kravtsov is not that guy. No, nope. they need to draft. Like they need these picks right now. That they need their Bedard stage. so bad. They do. They they need so much help, man. Like, and and these I, guys, I just, you're not gonna uh, find them in trades and and shit like that. Like, my god. Like, here's the thing: is like when I look at Quinn Hughes on their back end. I look at a guy that's like, he needs to take now the Rosmus Dahlin step where he needs to go from being a guy that gets 60 points a year but can't fucking defend it like an AHL player. He needs to find the next level. Or if he yeah. doesn't, what's he going to be? He's going to be a power play guy. He's going to be just a guy that racks up points but you can't trust. Like you said, Kyle, earlier about the Leafs and Riley, can you trust them to eat the minutes? 
I can't trust Quinn Hughes to, to fucking eat the minutes right, right now. I, I just no, can't. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I, I, I wouldn't just trust can't, him and going I, up against uh, no. a, top, a, a, a Bergeron, a Crosby, Absolutely a not. He'll get eaten alive. He'll get eaten alive. So for Vancouver, yeah, they're, they're just, just L's, man. L's across yeah. the board. Terrible. I, I'd hate to be a fan of that team. Oh. I'd be so down. Ugh. So down. Uh, yeah. J- John Ramo, who's your winner? And uh, another loser, maybe, if, if not Vancouver. Unless yeah, 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 no, no. No, no, for sure. Um, out of the interest of not being biased, I do think the Leafs for me would be the biggest winner because they not only was it quality, but it was qu- they, like they got both quality and quantity, and they actually addressed the needs they 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 actually needed. But out of the interest of not being biased, it has to be Boston for me. Like you had Orlov's got fucking nine points in four games. That's more points than all the Leafs I think have in the whole year. Like it, it's just ridiculous. You get Orlov, you bring in Hathaway, who's a, a big time grinder, can score big, can do it all, and you bring in Bertuzzi. Like, 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 if you list out Boston's bottom six right now, you like you're terrified. Coyle, Zaka, Bertuzzi, Hathaway. Like, it just it just doesn't stop. It's it, it it's just guy after guy after guy. Unbelievable trades, big winners, elite goaltending already. Boston's the big winner, and for me, the big loser. It has to be obviously aside from Vancouver, but like they're kind of like the fucking F tier. Yeah. So I'll go one up for another one. It has to be uh, Arizona for me. Like you absolutely yeah. botch the Jacob Chicken trade. You hold out for two years when you could have got. Imagine trading him with four years of term instead of two. Like your return goes up, and instead you've held it. You played Russian roulette and you missed, and they absolutely got nothing for a guy that's going to make Ottawa ten times better, um, and a team that needs needs a reason to stay in Arizona and you've just gotten rid of a guy who could have been part of a rebuild very easily because he's 24, 25. You didn't have to move him, but you unsettled him. You didn't grant his request right away. You destroyed the relationship and you got absolutely nothing for it. So Arizona, once again, as it seems to be for their eternity of their fucking lifespan, just another L. So for me, Arizona's the loser. Boston, the big winner. Kyle? Winner, uh, Boston Rangers. Ooh, uh, yeah, sends. Okay. Uh, you might throw. I might throw Toronto in there as well. Okay. Like those Eastern teams that bulked up. Yeah. They all did great. Losers. Colorado. Very disappointed that they didn't do more. I'm not sure why they didn't do more. They have the capital to do so. Yep. There was guys out there. They were looking at Horvat. They were looking at a lot of different guys. Horvat would look great on their second line. Um, and Pittsburgh. So good. Some of my favorite teams, uh, coincidentally enough, didn't do enough. And uh, I think it's going to – I'm not convinced Colorado won't make the finals, but but I'm now very convinced Pittsburgh won't do diddly squat. <laughs> so Colorado could have gone from my feelings now to a team, oh, fuck, they're definitely going to make it out of the West. They didn't do that, uh, and Pittsburgh's doomed. Like – and I don't know what the future looks like there. Like, I don't. I don't even know what to say about that. So, just guys that should have done more. Um, I guess they missed the train of the early trades. Maybe they thought the deadline day would be better, but fuck. And and disappointing. One, yeah. No, I I can't disagree with any of those picks. And and the one thing I'll say about the Vancouver, the last thing I'll say about that debacle <laughs> is that 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 pick, that pick that they <laughs> trade, the first rounder, that's the one they got for Horvat. It's the unprotected first rounder from the Islanders, and I could see the Islanders being shit at, no. like next year potentially. So th- it makes no sense. It, it completely boggles my mind. Oh man, I you know uh, what? It, it's just for Vancouver. It's like it's it's just it's been bad vibes all year. Coaches, guys yelling at each other. Yeah. Who the fuck wants to be in that dressing room right now? Yeah. There's no leaders. There's nobody there that can keep that in control. You disrespect Bruce Boudreau, who I absolutely love as a coach. Love is a guy. Everything about him screams class. And you treat him like dog shit. You give him a team that's dog shit and expect him to do well. And it's like, what do they have going for them? Like, Thatcher Demko is the only piece that I'm like, you can actually build around Thatcher Demko. He's a great goaltender. But it's like, what else do they have? It's bad contract after bad contract. Yeah. I, I don't know, man. There's, like, there's not even a prospect I can get excited about no. in that system. No, and that, that's what bothers me because it's like, this isn't going to be a two-year rebuild or a three-year. It's going to be like five years. they got to build the cupboard and hope they hit yes. and hope that they make the right picks because they haven't hit in recent years, right? No, absolutely. Like, like, the last time they drafted was really Hughes and Pedersen. The rest has been like, Ole Ulevi, top five pick, garbage. Nowhere Pod to be Colson. seen. Like, Pod Colson. 
He's all top right. nine forward, maybe yeah. at best, maybe top six if he develops. But yeah. it's like you can't be shit and not draft, or else you're gonna look like the Leafs for 15 years, where it's you know you're drafting you know Tyler Biggs in the first round. Like oh. man, like right, like we're starting to get to that point where like Vancouver's starting to pull a Toronto and to some extent Buffalo because I use them as a 10-year plan rather than now. Yeah. But Buffalo, before they, you know, brought in the right guys and got a good coach in, in, in Don Granato, who I, I think is a great guy. Um, I don't know, man. Like, they're really starting to scare me because it's, it's like bad after bad after bad. Like, they haven't done one thing where you're like, that was a good move, Vancouver. That, that was a nice move, right? Like, yeah. five mil for Mikheyev. Like, oh, my God. Yeah. It's like it gets, it, it, just, it gets worse. It just gets The more worse, I talk yeah. about Vancouver. It's crazy. No positives, man. None whatsoever. Um, Sad. Lastly... You're now yeah. after the deadline. The dust has settled. Um, <laughs> your your contender, your top contender in the East, and your top contender in the West. Let's. Uh, I'll, I'll, I, I'll. You know. I'll start. I'll say my my East yeah. for me in the East. It's Boston. I know that's a bad. You know. It's it's an eye roll of a take, but the reality is what Kyle said yeah. earlier. Sometimes with these teams that make runs that win cups, there's a hockey god element to it. You know, it's a lot of talent. It's about 90% talent and then like a 10% hockey god. And I think there's just some magic with this team. I think the Bergeron yeah. thing, there's something to be said about that. And I and I don't think you can overlook it. And there's something to be said about having the best winning percentage since the Habs in the 70s. It's just, it's just, yeah. it's just, a, it's just, I, I have trouble, you know, just for, forgetting about that. It's crazy. And then, uh, and, and then I agree with your take, John Ramo. My, my team to beat in the West is Dallas. I, uh, yeah, I, 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 like I love, I love Jake Ottinger. He's, he's been on my fantasy team all year and he's been carrying me big time. Uh, I, I think that. he's, de- he's, de- he's arguably des- most deserving of the Vezina because Olmark's got the best numbers, but he's splitting starts with Swayman. Ottinger has been the starter there. Wedgwood hasn't really been doing it. I think no. Ott- Ottinger has been the most indisplaceable, uh, uh, yeah. goalie in the league this year. Other, I mean, Sorokin, I think. You know, okay, fair enough. Yeah, he, he it's, gets it's that crown. He gets that crown, but but again, he doesn't have the numbers that that Ottinger does because the team yeah. in front of him. But the point is, I I think you know, I think Dallas didn't have to do anything this deadline. Oh, we, we haven't yeah. really talked about them much this show, but they didn't have to do anything. I think they like nope. they like that top line of Pavelski, Hints, and Robertson. They like the the resurgence of Ben and Sagan. Um, they like the youngsters and Wyatt Johnson and Stan Coben. They love their D. I love Wyatt Johnson, um, yeah, player. Yeah, I, I think they're they're legit. They're full value. I think too many people are sleeping on them. You look at the Vegas top yeah. odds to win, and va- Vegas is way d- or sorry, Dallas is way down there. Yeah. And and of course, uh, Kyle will roll his eyes over this. They got the right coach. Whenever that Pete DeBoer goes to a new market, <laughs> he, ju- he just he just fucking elevates them. You know, first year in a new market, the guy just gets it. See what he did in Vegas. See all those years what he did in San Jose. And lastly, John Ramo, he's got a law degree. He's got a fucking JD, and it counts for something. That's my take. That's right, baby. Hey, you know what? So does John Cooper, and uh, and, he's, <laughs> and 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 you know what? John Cooper's one of the best. So Nick I don't disagree with that. <laughs> but um, but yeah. So I I don't know. For me, I would say again, I want to say the Leafs because I think they've done it. But man, the hockey gods don't like the Leafs. So I'm gonna go with um. I'm actually gonna go with Carolina, and they're another team we haven't spoken about a lot. Wow. But um, I don't. There's something about like. There's something about the way they play, whether it's they take 60 shots a game on net, but it feels like they never give up goals. doesn't matter who the fuck is in net. They always turn out to have a 950 save percentage by the end of the year. This team is the most structured team in the NHL, maybe barring Boston, but it's not only puck possession. It's, they're just tough to beat. And how do you not like Ajo? How do you not like their, like their top is good? And Brent Burns is the biggest beauty in the NHL. And you put him alongside Slavin and, you, and all the guys that are there, they're deep. They're not unbelievable top to bottom, but it's like their fourth line can be their first and their first can be their fourth. There's just so much consistency there. And they play a system that is like conducive to playoff hockey. Like, like it's very much about grinding. It's not ultra high skill. It's the, the you know, they, they do a lot of good things, right? There's a lot of talent and obviously their record speaks for it. They're the second best team in the NHL record wise. But again, they didn't make a lot of moves, which concern me because I think they should also be going all in. But I don't know. There's something about the way they play. Maybe it's because the Leafs always lose to Carolina, and it's a team that we always get smashed by. But there's something about Carolina where, like, if they can just go on a run, they might do it. And from the West, yeah, my pick's going to be Dallas as well. And, again, I could say the low-hanging fruit and pick Colorado. But there's something about Dallas where, like, even when they made the run to the Cup Final, or was it the Cup Final, or was it the – um? Yeah, they played Tampa the in the West Cup Final, final. Yeah, That's right. It was the Cup Final, right? So they have that ability where, like, if Jake Ottinger carries it, 
they can do it, right? And and um, and I love the defenseman they have there. That's another one, Kyle, that we've mentioned, those guys that can eat minutes. When you look, I, I forget his name. He's the Finnish guy. Um, it's, oh, it's really a yeah. yeah. Miro Heiskanen is another guy that you're like, I can hang my hat on that guy carrying another team. And between him and Ottinger and, and I mean, Robertson is filthy and Hintz is yeah. gross and Pavelski seems to be like he's ageless. I think they have enough there to do it, but they're a team that scares me that they could go on a run. So those are my picks, Carolina and Dallas for me. Yeah, so I'll start in the East. Um, so in my little world, I, I don't want to choose Boston because <laughs> yeah. we, 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 we can all choose Boston. So yeah. I'll choose something else. Uh, I'll go Rangers. I will go yeah, Rangers. I, like I think uh, they've they've done enough. I think they made it to the they made it to the East Finals last year, and they're far better and more experienced. And they've got a little thing called X factors. You know what you're getting from the the top veterans, the top guys. You've got X factors in the kid line. Any one of those guys can have a monster playoff. Who knows who it's going to be? Probably little laugh, little, little guy. Two goals they got today. The goalie. Not one. You got two. Two goals. I know that's his first time ever getting two goals, I believe. Two so rips. I like to see that, yeah. So you look at the elements. You've got X factors. You've got top veterans. You've got experience now in Kane and Tarasenko. You've got the world beating goalie potentially uh, in Shesurkin. You've got yep. that physicality. You've got a guy in Truba who can scare the living daylights out of anybody, dirty or not. Yeah. In my opinion, oftentimes way too dirty, but yep. I digress. That's a scary team, man. That's a really scary team. Uh, they can go really far. Um, and a great coach. West, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love yeah. Gerard Gallant. He's, great uh, guy. I, I, I'm not sure I, I love how he develops young players, but he no, does get No, no, brutal. Yeah, brutal. <laughs> brutal with the youngsters, yeah. Uh, in the West, as much as I'm kind of contradicting myself, because I was kind of shitting on them earlier, for me it's always going to be Colorado. Mm. They're a worse team than last year. They they surely are. Loss of Kadri and whatnot. But last year they did not only win the cup, but they stomped the NHL getting there. <laughs> they had t- like the, one of the most dominant runs we've seen in the last 20 years. So if they can get a shred of that, I think they're going to be a force. Um, I'll take Nathan McKinnon over almost anybody in a playoff series. McCarr is going to be on his, on his game. Uh, I I like the look of Colorado, obviously. Again, and so. if Darcy Kemper gets hot, there's no question. Well, he's that gone. He he's gone. So so John Ramo, my question for you is: Can can Alexander Georgiev win a cup? Or Gorgiev? Sorry, that's what I meant to say. You know what? Here's the thing: He looked really good when he was on the Rangers. He's got the ability. He got yanked. He he's been he's be... been yanked this afternoon. That's five goals against on so 19 he's... shots. That's what I was about to say. He's either there's there's no in between with with uh, Gorgiev, and I've seen him a lot against the Leafs when he's looked fucking unbelievable. Yeah. But Gorgiev is one of those guys where when he's on, unbeatable. But there's no middle ground with Gorgiev. There's no good Gorgiev game. It's either unbelievable or like you said, it's yanked. It's five goals against or one. There's no middle ground. So if he's on the one in the playoffs, they'll win. If he's not, they yeah. can't handle that. No team can outplay that. It's it's wish way too hard. That's why I'm scared. He's on my fantasy team. He can single-handedly lose a playoff week for me or win it. He had a shutout on Monday night, and he's been five goals against today. It's, and, it's that, and that's what I mean. And, and, and for NHL goalies, it's the ones that are always good are just the ones that are the most consistent, right? Can he, can he find some consistency in the playoffs? And if he can find some, they'll be fine. But I just, I don't know. I, he's, I don't know, man. It's tough. Like, you know, you look at the Rangers, like you said, Shosturkin, you know what you're getting. Vasilevsky, you know what you're getting. Sorokin, if they make it, you know what you're getting. But if Buffalo make it, is UPL going to show up? Or are we going to rely on a 42-year-old Craig Anderson to carry us? Kind of yeah. hard. In Ottawa, can Cam Talbot do it in the playoffs? We saw when he was with Edmonton, he couldn't. Can he do it now with the Leafs? It's Samson. Like, there's, there's a lot of question marks in that for these teams. And even Linus Olmark and Jeremy Swayman, they're not proven but they get a pass because the team is so good. Nobody wants to talk about it. But Linus Olmark is having a one year like you saw Linus Olmark when he played for Buffalo. He was always good, but he was kind of a product of a team that wasn't ready yet. But nobody knew Linus Olmark was going to be this good. But yet he doesn't get spoken about like Samsonov or the other goalies because the team is that much better. Right? But nobody knows how he's going to play in the playoffs. Same with Swayman, right? They're both relatively young new goaltenders, so we'll see how they do. But there's a lot of question marks outside of Vasilevsky, Sorokin, and uh, Shesterkin. It, it's really all question marks in that for, 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 for every team. So we'll yeah. see. 
I will say Georgiev, uh, better numbers this year than Darcy Kemper had last year. Yeah. He's got a 922 uh, and a 255 in 42 games. Good sample size. And Kemper had a 921, 254. Yeah. So very, very similar. And those are both elite numbers. Like, like if your save percentage can hover above 920 – in, like in today's really NHL, good. yeah, that's that's crazy. It's yeah. really good. But it's funny because even with those numbers, we, we're still so concerned because we see the five goal games. Like his yeah. thing is, is his thing is, is the numbers stay high because he's got two or three good ones and then a fucking shit. Then two or yeah. three good and a shit. But because the two or three good ones are so good, the numbers never drop. But still, who still feels comfortable with him in a playoff series with those numbers? Yeah. Nobody, right? Because we don't know that those games can be can be backbreaking in a playoff series, a.k.a. Yeah. the Leafs for the last fucking seven years, right? Like, yep. Yep. the same shit. Yeah. Different yeah. jersey, but we'll see. You're right. Yeah. The hockey gods are looking upon Boston, though. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, last thing before we go here. Uh, John Raymond and I were talking about Trade Center the other day, Kyle. Uh, John Raymond, you don't Dude. know this, but Kyle used to work at TSN. He was an intern. No way. He was an intern. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and he oh, actually okay. got to help out on one of the train centers. He's on set helping out the boys. No way. Oh, yes. I love the boys there, man. They're all fucking great. Yeah. And uh, this year, of course, their uh, their big segment was the Bad for Bedard song. So Kyle, love Kyle, it. on a zero Dang to it. on a zero to ten cringe scale or you loved it scale, where do you sit with Bad for Bedard? Nine out of ten loved it. Wow. I thought it was great. You know I'm you know I'm a fan of these like catchy, <laughs> goofy songs. We make a bunch <laughs> of them ourselves, Nick. Yeah, it's you hard. Know? It's not easy. It it sounded like us making a song for the show. <laughs> and uh and I thought it was funny. Um you know, it was just catchy enough and I and yeah, I, I thought it was great. Uh, I don't understand the Josh take at all. One of our buddies hated it. What did you think, John Remo? 10 out of 10, man. Anytime you get the O-Dog in something, I'm on board, man. The guy's an absolute beauty. I think his takes are always good. Sometimes they're yeah. controversial, but, I mean, I just, like, and yeah, maybe he's a little bit of a leap homer, but, I mean, I love the O-Dog, you know, just, just the years and years of Trade Center, the good moments. Anybody who's got any ketchup on that burger will always will yeah. always resonate with me. A goaded moment for me on Trade Center, but, yeah, the boys are great. Uh, song was banging, and, um, I mean, it's just just unbelievable great song great tune um i'm gonna be playing it in the car later so i i liked every part except for the rap i thought the rap was a little was a little off but everything you else know was what good. though but uh, i know but it, it was overall man still it it was yeah. a good attempt man it was a good attempt i'll take it um and like i said O-Dog with the Louis Vuitton briefcase, too. Oh, like, I love it, yeah. Absolutely balling in. I love to see it. Um, He's the best. Kyle, why don't you tell John Ramo your story about meeting my idol on the set of Trade Center Oh, before we go here? Yeah, I met. so I met McGuire. I met Pierre McGuire oh, yeah. when I was there. Uh, he, was, he wasn't working for TSN, but he, had, you know, he comes in for Trade Center. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I see him hovering around the, the, the food table just alone. <laughs> and I think I said something along the lines of, you know, it's uh, it's nice to meet you. Uh, always been a big fan, something like that. And he goes, "Oh, uh, wh- where do you work around here?" And I'm, I told him what I did, and he kind of, he kind of, at, at that point, he kind of shrugged me off, and, and he, <laughs> and he kind of moved on. But what I recognized most about him, which was so shocking, he he's very much built like a penguin. <laughs> like he's 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 taller than I thought, but the way his midline just bulges out. Oh yeah, like, he's <laughs> got that weird. And then he kind of waddles along. Like he's just so fucking oddly shaped. Yeah. <laughs> it was just like, it was just shocking. It was shocking. Yeah, yeah. And then you throw in the glasses, and you're like, oh boy, it's, yeah. it's just he's the he's the peanut the man. He, he's the he's the peanut man. He's the planter's peanut man. Yeah, yeah. But, you know what, man? I'll always love him from you know the days of the World Juniors where he yeah. gives you the full bio the minute somebody he's like. Jordan Everly from, from, you know, Spokane, Alberta, or this, like, random place. He'll be like, great player, you know, 67 points, scored two goals last night. Like, the most useless uh, yeah, fucking yeah. facts. But, like, just just a big-time energy guy. Um, for me, it's always been Ray Ferraro. I'm so mad he's gone from TSN. I love Ray. Great yeah. taste. Absolutely knows the game. Um, and just, yeah, him and Gord, man, I fucking miss them on the air. And instead, I got to listen to Craig Simpson and fucking the other, whatever his name yeah. is tonight, the most anti leaps yeah. and uh, – but, you know, in Leaf fashion, I'm expecting a big L tonight against Vancouver, so we'll see. Of course. Oh, of come course. on. Classic. No, I'm telling you, man. It's, it's, 
That's been the story of the Leafs this year. Put them up against the top team and they play great. Put them up against fucking Arizona and they forget how to play hockey. So yeah, um, that's true. hopefully that keeps going for the playoffs though because they're only going to play good teams. So yeah. we'll and, see what uh, happens. But, and um, fun fact, John Rambo, you mentioned Ray Ferraro. I have yeah. a I have a Hartford Whalers Ray Ferraro number twenty nine jersey. Anytime, any any made, any man. anytime <laughs> Kyle and I go get on a pond in Northern Love Ontario it. or an yeah. outdoor rink in Toronto, instantaneous respect. Instantaneous. Yeah, respect. no. no when I when Whalers, I wear this, I back, get baby. chirped. I get chirped wherever. Really? I go. Yes. Come on. No, they go. They I the kids fucking chirp me with the Shane Wright jersey. It's not 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 good. But Ferraro's Hartford Brutal. jersey, instantaneous respect. respect. Instant yeah, teams. I love Hartford, man. Great team, great colors, great jersey, yeah. great everything, man. Bring them back. Yeah. And the Nordiques. Oh, yeah. Let's oh. get a rivalry in Montreal going, man. Wouldn't that be something? Oh, That'd be my God. sweet. Oh, it'd be unbelievable to see the Nordiques back. Batman sucks. <laughs> Terrible. Just brutal. Anyway, I want to finish with one hot take from each of you. So you guys know mine, which is uh, Rosmus Dahlin for the Norris. Oh, um, give me a hot take, guys. Let's hear it. Okay. Uh... <laughs> I don't know if it's hot enough, man. I don't know if it's hot enough. Okay. Okay. Nick, you go first. No. What? No. <laughs> yeah, he put you on the spot. You got to go first. Okay. Okay. I'll go. I'll go. Um, oh, fuck. Okay. I got, I got one. I got one. I got one. Yeah. If. Okay. Sen- okay. Sends make the playoffs. Yeah. Sens make the playoffs and they get into a, if they face Carolina, I say they beat Carolina. And they, uh, they, they and then all of a sudden they're they do damage. That's that's my take. I think as soon as they make the playoffs, like this team's going to be fucking nasty. I like that. Uh, my my hot take: if uh, if the if the Devils happen to get the Rangers, I think the Devils might be able to beat the Rangers. That's my hot take, oh. and I and I and I think they could maybe go on a run. So I I know I think wow. they're great. I think they're You're great. Such an arse. I think they're great, but I I that goaltending, you know, like who is their goalie, John Rambo? Like it's like uh, Vitek Vanacek. Yeah, man. who Fucking, is he? They had they had it was or Schmid that other guy Schmid he played yeah, last night. Yeah, sh- sh- yeah, Schmid is what I call him because yeah. he's bad too. <laughs> um, the one that I like to you know what it is? It's like and it's funny because. You look at Washington, which is, I think, another team that really we didn't talk much about. But I don't know. Like, that's another aging core that I think they should have been going all in for again, man. Like, how many years does Washington have left, right? Like, it, to me, it amazes me. But Washington had Vitek Vanacek and Samsonov as their goalies, and they both ended up elsewhere. Vanacek was okay. But, again, he's not, I, I just don't think he's the guy that you go deep with. But how many times have I said all it takes is for a good run from Vanacek, and he'll be one of the best in the league all of a sudden, right? Like, like, right now, would you take Vanacek or Markstrom in shitty form? Like, it, it's one of those things where it's like, do we rely on pedigree with goalies or do we look at form? Because if you ask me as a Leaf fan, would I want Markstrom now or Samsonov, I'm still picking Markstrom. Because I know what he can bring and I know what he's done. There's, there's, you know what I mean? One bad season for Markstrom is not going to make me sway in my opinion. So, right. you're right. I think... Man, the East is going to be, like, in three years, man, the East is going to be, like, unbelievable. Like, you look at the Metro, it's going to be great. Seeing the Islanders dead last makes me happy. It's going to be brilliant. Them down at the bottom and every team good. The Habs, uh, Kyle, man, I don't know what you think about uh, Slavkovsky, but I have some reservations. I don't like him. Um, I actually don't like him. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you, because I was clamoring. Me too. Okay. Okay. This is good. This is good. We got a rational Habs fan that understands that we're lucky if he ever scores 25 goals in this league. I, I feel bad because like because the Habs need it. But Nick Suzuki's great. Drew N, garbage. Like they got some pieces there, but like I like I just feel for the Habs, man. Like the prospect pool's not good enough for me. Caden yeah. Gooley though, Gooley's awesome, man. Unbelievable. Awesome, awesome yeah. defenseman. Would have been great to have him alongside Sergachev though. And that oh, will always fuck. bother me. It'll always bother me that they gave up Drew and Pursue. Worst fucking trade in the last 10 years I've ever seen. It, it's just garbage. I feel so bad for Habs fans for that. I, I will never. So this is something I never <sighs> let Joe get over. But yeah. Give me one second here. Yeah, go for it. I will never let Joe get over the fact that. Don't tell me Toronto, he said it was a good trade. 2020 draft Toronto yeah. picks Rodion Amirov. The yep. Montreal picks Caden Gooley the next pick. And and when when we were at that when we were we scouted that draft harder than we've scouted any draft 
I was like, and you know, the whole health thing aside, I, yeah. that's not part of this. Yeah, of course, I said, of course. I said to the boys in the group chat, watch Toronto pick Rodion Amirov. And what could he possibly top out as? Probably a second line winger. Maybe. Like, maybe. Maybe. But then you look at a guy like Caden Gooley, who's unbelievable. Even a Braden Schneider. I never let Joe let the, live this down. A right-handed, big, really solid defensively already defenseman. Yeah. Like, what were they thinking there? I what don't know. were they thinking? Honestly, man, I don't know. That's why I'm hoping to God that Lilligren pans out, and he's slowly but surely coming into his own. Um, and he was a guy that if he didn't have mono during his draft, he would have. He was going to be a fucking top pick as well. So I hope he comes through. But the Habs, it's like for every one good move they seem to make, there's another one. And I get it. They're at the mercy of who you pick. But could you imagine if they had picked like Namek instead of taking Slavkovsky? Yeah, like their defense core like, would be. Oh my god, it would be, it'd it'd be, be so you, sad. It would be, be so sad. Yeah. But um, it's unfortunate because everyone was, you know, and Slavkovsky's big in this. But it's like I don't know, like. Like, I thought it was going to be a little bit of a hot take, but I always said he was a bust at the start, and I didn't like the way he played. Even at the World Juniors, I was like, something about this guy screams like a big guy that just can't get it done. He hasn't done it this year, but again, I won't count him out because people counted out Cole Caulfield, and he looks great. I won't count him out yet, but I haven't just seen enough of him. With Cole Caulfield, for me, the problem was he was afraid to shoot, and also the coach treated him like fucking garbage and gave him no chances. You can't play Cole Caulfield on the fucking fourth line and not give him power play time with a shot he's got. Like, yeah. you're literally setting the kid up to fail. But now, you see what happens. So, I hope Slavkovsky can come. I mean, I don't because I'm a Leaf fan. But for the spirit of hockey, I hope he comes good. But there's something about him that scares me. And I feel for the Habs because they needed that. Like, imagine yeah. last year getting the first and then missing out on Bedard. Like, fuck. Oh. Like, it's one of those things where you're like, the Habs should have just tanked again this year. Gone for Bedard. Imagine Bedard fucking C1, Suzuki C2. Yeah. Holy yeah, no, shit. Like, stupid. man, it, it, it would be stupid good. And yet, here we are. So... That's unfortunately the luck of the draw sometimes. But, um, no, anybody picking Roydian Amirov over Caden Gooley needs to fucking go back and relearn the game of hockey because it was yeah. just a horrific... And, and, and again, not, not only that, takes, so. not only that, but uh, so it's, it's, it's Schneider five picks after Amirov. It's, it's Gooley the pick after, and then four picks after, it's Dawson Mercer. So yeah. that's the three guys they could have foreseeably taken before Amirov. Yeah. Um, and you know imagine what? Mercer in that leaf top six right now. Oh, God. Holy and I always fuck. say, like, that's just – that is one of those things that this Leafs management can do is they try to galaxy brain, outthink everybody. Like, let's be it's the smartest much. team in the league and, yeah. and pick Rodion because we think we see something. Yeah. We think he can be the next Nylander. Like, what's he going to be, man? No. Come on, man. Now, Kyle, Crazy. question for you. Would you have taken Gooley or Mercer now? So I'm trying to think of what I would have done at the time. Oh, you mean huh. now? Like my knowledge now or at the time? Yeah, like like your knowledge now. Because then I like I'm still like I still think Gooley was a good pick, regardless of how Mercer's turned out. But it's almost like yeah. now thinking about what you need or thinking now, would you have taken Mercer compared to Gooley? Um, fuck. It's hard, it's hard man. Yeah, that's hard, man. They're they're both really good. I yeah. personally. I would have I would have stuck with Gooley on Same. that one. I I think he's the the, the skating this like he's just gonna be a really really he's solid smooth. Duck guy. And I think you yeah. can find another Dawson Mercer easier than you can find another player like yeah. Gooley. How many times have we talked about needing a defenseman, like yes. having to draft one? Leafs yeah. haven't been able to do it. Maybe Montreal has with Gooley, right? So yeah. I think you're always it's always a safer bet. But man, Namek would look so good right now. I know, I so know. good. And uh, I you know what I I saw somewhere that. Slaff has a th- something like a two or three percent chance of becoming a star in the league. Oh. Based how do they on, quantify like, that? Like, how do you no, even no, say three yeah, percent? That's very interesting. I know yeah. well, like, we, we shit on analytics, but what this guy does, he, he, he profiles players with the same numbers coming from the same league and, and like the age, and he considers oh. everything and it says, okay, statistically. He's got a 3% chance of making it. You know wow. what, though? As much as we can chirp on him and, and say he hasn't had a great year, now he might not be the one. Uh, they did rush him. As an 18-year-old, he shouldn't have played oh. in the NHL this year. He should have played what back back thinking? in Finland. It's just it, it's the it's the it's the curse, you know. Every time they the rush, AHL. every time they rush an 18-year-old like this, if you're not Bedard, if you're not McDavid, it's just not a good look. And but I you think know what? this will be a bad. It won't age well. Like Montreal seems to do this too often. Whether it Galchenyuk. was Galchenyuk, whether it was all these, they just they rush. It's like it's this like we get the fan base wants it, 
but develop it. I'm not using the Leafs as, as a prime example, but they were fucking garbage at developing players. And then they said, you know what? Let's send Nylander down. Let's get him going. Let's give Marner another let. Let's get these guys going and give them. The only one that was worthy was Matthews, but he's fucking like otherworldly, right? Like yeah. they gave Marner didn't right away. Nylander it wasn't right away. Even with Riley, they took a lot of time. Like you have to develop, and you rush Lukowski in. He's not ready. Right? You rush guys like Galchenyuk in. Not ready. Caught Kanyemi, which, by the way, a four, like, man, Montreal really hasn't hit on a lot of their picks. No. Like, they should be where Ottawa is right now, but, man, the drafting has been garbage. they got to improve that if they want to get better. Um, they also should have traded uh, Joel Edmondson. It's another piece that they could have got, but I don't know why. I don't know why the Habs held on. Anyway... And and, yeah, and, and, um, and not to be negative, Na- not to be negative, Nancy here. But look at look at his counterpart, Shane Wright. Right, gets to play in the World Junior. He gets to raise the trophy before anybody yeah. else, before Connor Bedard, before Connor Bedard. Yeah. I might add, he got to hold the trophy. Right, Kyle, that counts yeah. for something. He gets yep. to be in the he gets to be in the TSN shot where it says, you know, uh, champions live here. And yeah, and, and now right, and right. now and now he's going to lead a Windsor Spitfires team to the Memorial Cup. So that kid's going to that kid's going to have an incredible incredible year post draft. Good on him. And poor Slaff is sitting in a fucking rehab bed. And uh yeah, it's <laughs> just it's just very sad. L- can I just say one more thing on cuz like you got me going now. <laughs> because you know what me and Nick were in a bar in Ireland watching this draft. No, and it it was in uh it was in uh, London. Was it in it was, it was okay, with our yeah. mate there in the UK. Yes, yes. So this goes down, and, and like, the fallout is, oh, like, it's going to be a lot of pressure, and Montreal wanted a guy who's used to the pressure and steps up in the pressure. And I'm like, buddy, Shane Wright has been this touted guy since yeah. he was 15. He knows that he's from a Canadian market. He's had the eyeballs on him for fucking years. You Slavkovsky's lived in anonymity for his whole life. And now he's just getting absolutely bagged. Like when he does Terrible. play, when he does play, he's he's unbelievably raw. You can yeah, say there's you some tell. skill there, but absolutely can't put it together at the speed he needs to. And he he has often looked like the moment is too big for him. Yeah, and, and um, it's, it's again, just regular hope, season, right? It's like, yeah, my God, hopefully he man, comes like, through, a, but it's rough. The 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 the, man, the management group in Montreal right now is is has done amazing things. I think they bungled that one hard. Yeah, hard. they did. They did. Like, I like the move for Kirby Doc. I, I, I thought that was good. They didn't really give up a lot. But, um, yeah, I just, like, I think, and last year's draft was such an unknown because of everything that had gone on with, you know, yeah. COVID and everything it was tough for these guys to get game time. And it was a crapshoot. That's why everyone's like, fucking give me the second, third round picks, right? Because yeah. guys are going to fall that didn't get to be seen a lot. And I think this it's a draft to watch four or five years down the line to see which team bangs and did really well and see which team kind of just, you know, the lack of scouting kind of did it. But other than that, man, those are my takes. I, I really don't got much else there. So I guess yeah. we'll see what happens, but the playoffs should be great. So Yeah. No, and, and, and yeah, thanks for coming on, John Ramo. Uh, pleasure. Listen, we guys, always like having, new, having yeah, new warm bodies here. And uh, that was, no, you, you, you lended great knowledge. Uh, and it was, it was a pleasure it. having you. Yeah, listen, guys, anytime. Um, Anytime I'm available, man. You guys got good takes, and, and uh, yeah, this has been fun. So if ever again you guys want or, you know, you want to hear me speak, uh, give me a shout. I really appreciate it. Thanks for the opportunity. You know what? Uh, yeah, pleasure having you. What I'd also like is uh, maybe we can set up some some playoff games to watch. Uh, come, yeah, let's come do it. Playoff season. Let's do Absolutely. it. We'll, we'll get a little group together, and usually we get uh, whoever's been on the show together yeah. and whatnot. and yeah, let's do it for sure. For yeah. sure, there'll be a lot to break down. That's for sure. So, oh fuck yeah, Absolutely. this is going to be a good. I don't know. Something tells me this is just. It's going to be a good. It's, yeah, it's a lot of fucking sick teams out there. Like all the 100%. big guys loaded up. Mm-hmm. So it's going to be the best of the best. It's exciting. We'll see what happens. Especially for us in the East, like mm-hmm. yeah, clash of the titans. Oh my god, Whoever Leaves, wins the Tampa cup. Rangers Devils. Yeah. Those t- those already look like series that are going to happen. So. Yeah, like whatever team wins from the East. It'll be this will be the most impressive Stanley Cup ever won if it's a team from the East because you would have had to knock down like yeah like every top five team in the NHL is effectively from the East yeah so it, it's 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 a monster this year yeah, yeah. well uh, yeah we hope you fans enjoy the last month of the season as much as we will we'll be keeping close attention uh, look out for more coverage heading into the playoffs and uh, picks predictions all that nonsense like every year so uh, yeah uh, thank you for listening yet again it's been a pleasure to serve you. And uh, Rink Moose is signing off.